So I want to say hello, welcome to Cut the Bottom of Post Truth Apocalypse. I'm Ben, as always I'm joined by Gaz. Hello. And Mike. Hello. This is Weird News Live. Today, the main topic, which you're going to see if you listen to us on one of the many platforms you can listen to us, SoundCloud, iTunes, Spotify, Podcast, YouTube, oh. YouTube, Podbean, yeah. Player.fm. Player.fm, another one, I didn't even know it. Uh, Tune in Radio, yeah. Spotify, all of them, wherever you get yeah. podcasts. I'm just going to move it this. We probably should have done all this before we started recording. Well, the England game's been on, we've had a few. A live video. <laughs> this is the professionalism you've come to know and love from us. Yes. Hey. <laughs> so today's main topic is haunted battlefields. So I get to talk about military history and I guns. wonder, who, who picked this topic this week? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> who did? <laughs> but uh, alright, let's go through some of our top listens. So we've got, we'll start with Harley Pool, Harley Pool, United Kingdom, the Monkey Angers. Well done, hello. Bangalore, India, Sydney, Australia, Turin in Italy, Las Vegas City in the Philippines, Willingborough, New Jersey, Coventry, United Kingdom, North Hollywood, California. Wow. Israel, Rishon Lezion. I don't know how you say it, no idea. <laughs> Pronunciation of places is not my strong point, as like your listeners will know. <laughs> San Jose, uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, Little Rock, you're back, welcome. Prague, Telford, welcome, our hometown. Eugene, Oregon, Shady Nasty, New York. <laughs> and in at number one. Wow. Wolverhampton. Wolverhampton, fresh off all their Europa League success. Mm, Flying yeah. high, they've decided they need some comedic conspiracy themed podcasts. To add to their joy. Who's been listening to it then in Wolverhampton? <laughs> Gary Poundland. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's a traditional Wolverhampton name. <laughs> or Darren. Uh, he's like one of the Facebook comedians. But Gary Poundland, like the shop, but like I say, not spelt the same. <laughs> <laughs> he's quite good. I'm Shout sure. <laughs> so, all right, um, let's do weird news. Yeah. What's weird this week? What do we got? Let's get the boys' views on this week's weird news. This is going to not surprise you. (laughs) Okay. Thousands in the UK born as a result of extreme inbreeding. Mm. Fucking hell. No, it doesn't. No. (laughs) A lot of them will be posh. Thousands in 68 million. Hmm? Is that a big percentage? I just thought it was Brexit. Purposes. Big enough when it's fucking interbreeding, mm-hmm. isn't it? I suppose. Yeah. Thousands of people in the UK are likely to be the result of extreme inbreeding between close relatives, a study has suggested. I bet the higher you go up in the class system, the more... It well, is. we could be talking about the aristocracy, I suppose, when it's thousands. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, yeah. It's the renowned they literally, they literally marry cousins to, so the money flow is in the right direction. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Royal yeah. family, I mean... Do you want to say nothing? <laughs> An analysis of DNA stored in the UK Biobank, which stores hundreds of thousands of volunteers' genetic material, found a fraction of those sequenced were conceived by parents who are either first or second degree relatives. A first degree relative is someone who shares 50% of a person's genes, so a parent or child, while second degree relatives are those who share 25% of the same DNA, including uncles, grandparents, and half siblings. Who's shack up with a grandparent? <laughs> Someone evidently. <laughs> I didn't fuck my granny. <laughs> Out of a total of more than 450,000 participants, researchers from the University of Queensland found 125 whose genes suggested they were the offspring of extreme inbreeding. Fuck. The volunteers were all individuals of European descent, born between 1938 and 1967, and that would explain why our fun, why the baby boomer generations fucked everything up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I do hate that. That's one of my new things I hate on Twitter is, like, young people, anyone of a certain age gets called a boomer now. Yeah, or a but, gammon. But I love how they, they like to... Everyone has to have a label so you can shut them down. Like, shut up, you boomer. That's literally their yeah. fucking comeback. Shut up, you boomer. Oh, fucking hell, because <laughs> they've got a name now. They're not allowed to spek. Fucking boomers. Well, they have been a mess of things. All of them, so they should all just shut up. Yes. And never have an opinion. Absolutely. Obviously. I'm joking, obviously. Of course. There's no denying they're fucked up, though. <laughs> I mean, we're heading for oblivion. 
Yeah. Pretty much as fucked up as you can get. The planet's on fire. And, <laughs> the and they're broken. our parents, so they were stewards of, you know, of, of the earth, weren't they? I'm telling you, flat out now, you fucking hippie. My mother was like, <laughs> fuck all to do oh, with no, the state no, no, of the no, fucking no. world. That's, but that's my point. You can talk about, oh, that generation fucked it up. That generation's government fucked things up. Fucking Karen from that generation, she's still allowed to have an opinion on Twitter. Do you know what I mean? She didn't fuck anything up for anybody. <laughs> she's saying good, obviously. Shut up, Karen, you boomer. I'm way more intelligent than you. I'm 17. <laughs> and I'm in I between knew every, genders. I knew everything when I was 17. <laughs> oh, fuck. I, I've literally come to the conclusion. Anybody who's not under the age of 25, who isn't related to me through blood or marriage, or isn't the child of a friend of mine, anyone under the age of 25 can fuck off. <laughs> I have got nothing I want to hear from you or I want to say to you. You don't want to hear anything from me. You know it all. Fuck off. Honestly, the arrogance of these cunts. Anyway, I'm, I'm, on, I'm shouting at clouds now. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <that's laughs> <clouds. laughs> fuck them. Uh, so, extrapolating the sim sample data across England and Wales results in an estimate of 13,200 people born into inbreeding. The studies authors warn the figure could be even higher. The extent to which our estimate reflects the true prevalence of extreme inbreeding in the entire UK population is a difficult question. The UK Biobank is known to have overrepresentation from healthy and highly educated individuals, which likely biases our estimates. So, I think we're looking at the aristocracy then. Of course, we are. <laughs> Do you see uh, about Eton actually that, that sample question on an exam for like thirteen year olds? Yes. Yeah. Is like right? Okay, you're the prime minister, and there's been massive civil unrest. You've deployed the army. People have been shot. Okay. Go out there and spin it so it sounds good. Yeah. Write a speech so it sounds like you're <laughs> justify the good. killing. Justify it. And you're like wow. That's it. I don't care. They're psychopaths. Psychopaths breeding more psychopaths. Yeah. Inbred psychopaths. Inbred psychopaths. <laughs> well, I think that's it, really. <laughs> Don't trust the upper classes. They're all inbred. Yeah. And psychopaths. And psychopaths. Out of arranged marriages. Oh, yeah. What's next? I found this to be sad news, because I think that Nessie is, like, with Bigfoot, a friend of the show. <laughs> and Like most of your friends, entirely imaginary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nessie, Bigfoot, <laughs> Satan. <laughs> <laughs> um, me too. <laughs> Nessie, Bigfoot, and Sage, and they're the only friend of the youth and you two. That's it. Bless him. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, over 60% of your friends don't exist. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Bigfoot's still hanging on in there for existence, isn't he? Well, no one's proved he doesn't. Well, I guess they have by not finding him. There you go, world hard and sea champion, mm. that's all. Well, apparently not, because according to the BBC, he may be a giant eel. A Latin, the Loch Ness Monster. Oh, what are we on about? Well, yeah. I was on a Bigfoot then. Oh, Bigfoot's right, a yeah. he, Ness is a <laughs> shoe. Uh, to be clear for the listener, we're talking about the Loch Ness Monster now. What's yeah. the story, Mike? <laughs> well, a Loch Ness Monster may be giant eel, so yeah. scientists. Yeah. Do you remember when we did the Nessie episode, and I said that New Zealand scientist was taking water DNA samples, and you all roundly mocked me, saying, "What's he doing? Get a sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? What's he doing? Get a get a glass of water at the lock and testing it. When well, he's actually come back with the results now. Uh, yeah. Research. What do they say? It's a fucking eel. <laughs> no, I just stood there because Gaz's Ted Bundy cast was <laughs> was putting the key mark in the keyboard. <laughs> Ted Bundy? Why Ted Bundy? Well, he used to wear a cast to lure women into his van and he clubbed them over the head. Uh, Why yeah. not Randy Orton Senior? Oh, Alright, then we can do that if you want to. Yeah. My mind just went to Ted Bundy. My mind went to WrestleMania 1 and that, therein lies the difference between you and I. Back to this well, big you know, hat, that's all. <laughs> To the giant slippery eel. Yeah. Researchers from New Zealand have tried to catalogue all living species in the loch by extracting DNA from water samples. Following analysis, the scientists have ruled out the presence of large animals said to be behind reports of a monster. I see. Well, it's because Ness is now in Albania. Mm -hmm. he found out what about? No evidence of a prehistoric marine reptile called a pleosaur or a large fish such as a sturgeon were found. 
Wow. Catfish and suggestions that a wandering Greenland shark were behind the sightings were also discounted. So Nessie's not real. Can we just have a look at the picture of that scientist again? I know the <laughs> listener can't see it, but fuck it. <laughs> he looks real. He's holding up a cup of water, listener, and uh, he looks very happy with that. He does look very happy. <laughs> What's he doing with the other arm? <laughs> water porn? <laughs> so that's Professor Neil Gemmel. Wow, what a guy. He's yeah. fun at parties. <laughs> Yeah. Well, actually, the evidence does not really point to a pleosaur or any of the giant monsters. It's more indicative of a large eel. Oh, fuck off! Fuck off, I want to believe in Nessie! Fuck off, <laughs> Nigel, whatever your name was. Neil. I want there to be a Nessie. Yeah. Come to me with your giant eels. Still, though, a giant eel that's big enough to be seen, like... You know, like if it's a lot bigger... Are we talking Princess Bride giant eels? Yeah, even bigger, I'm thinking, like... Think about the dog from Never Ending Story. What about the worms from June? Like that, we talk yeah, about that. There you go. Like, <laughs> That's a fucking big worm, big that, eel. That I would be impressed. And we just call it the Loch Ness eel. Yeah. Monster it's eel. It's not a monster, it's a monster eel. Yeah. So Probably. fuck you, Neil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that... With this I mean, science. I think the main people, apart from most who are against this, are the whole of people in Scotland who live in the area <laughs> who've got shelves full of cuddly yeah. nurses. Oh, I've got to have all them redone, haven't I? Eels. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just put googly eyes on this brown stick. <laughs> <laughs> 12 quid. People will still buy them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next. Yeah, why not? <laughs> I love how every week, you know, just for a little bit of inside baseball, if you're watching or listening, we don't pre-discuss these news stories before we just press record and they spring it on it on me. And I've got a funny feeling that they're specially curated for me, the well, ones I have to well, read out. I just send three ones over. I just pick them random. And Mike adjust. Mike determines Why am I always about order? cocks, sex... <laughs> I tend to leave them to last, I think. The more serious stuff comes first, so it's just... Okay. You happen to read them last. So. Right, so I'm just being paranoid. <laughs> you don't think I'm a pervert. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Alright then, the final news story of this week. Giant's erection to be polished by hand for two weeks. <laughs> A giant chalk figure of a man with a huge club. Oh, thank God it said club. <laughs> He's got a uh, club and a massive penis. Right. He's got both. Well, a giant chalk figure of a man with a huge club is being given a makeover. The world famous uh, Cern, 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 Abadas, uh, Cern, Cern, one of the two. You know the one, we've all seen it. It's in Dorset on the side of a cliff. It's 180 foot tall and will be re chalked by hand by dozens of volunteers over the next two weeks. It has been a feature of the area since the 17th century and is in need of a gentle polish and tickle to restore it, including the, the 36 foot erect penis. <laughs> since its last refresh in 2008, the weather has taken its toll and weeds have encroached on the giant, blurring its previously sharp, chalky outline. He's got weeds on his dick. <laughs> <laughs> you know that I'm the only one. <laughs> <laughs> Tons of the white stuff extracted from a nearby area <laughs> will be tightly packed in by hand to the existing 1,509 foot outline of the figure to ensure it remains visible for miles around. The giant was given to the National Trust to look after in July 1920 by the Pitt Rivers family and the Trust is planning a year of celebrations next year to mark the centenary. Natalie Holt Countryside manager for the National Trust said, Rechalking the giant is challenging in many ways, not only due to its size, but because of the sheer throbbing enormity <laughs> of his member. <laughs> no, uh, uh, I, I added that bit. Uh, because of the sheer steepness of the slope he's on. And that's why we give you the cut uh, articles. <laughs> <laughs> the angle of his erection is rather difficult. It needs redoing every ten years or so because he does get discoloured and weathered and covered in weeds. I like the fact well, that back in the day, <laughs> that culture, but you know what we need on that hill? 
<laughs> 36 foot <laughs> cloak with a giant cock. Well, yeah. think about what does that symbol 180 say? 180 foot with a 36 oh, foot yeah. cock. Yeah. <laughs> He's wielding a club with a frightening erection. If that doesn't tell you to fuck off. I don't know what, I'm, not, I'm not going into that village. Yeah. I'm not going over that. Anymore. If he doesn't beat me to death, he's going to do dirty. If I was the lord of that land, I'd have that image on the shields of my warriors. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, you can only see it from the air. And there wasn't a thing in the air at that point in the 17th century. Well, obviously, it was, it was made in the 17th century. Was it? it? No, it's been, oh, it's been a feature, yeah, sorry, yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. I thought it was older than that, I thought it was like going back to Wasn't the... there Leonardo da Vinci style push pedal flying machines? Oh, hot air balloons, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> they may have been there, but they weren't pedaling and flapping wings yeah. at the same time. Oh, I'm thinking of steampunk, aren't I? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not actual history. That's right. It's a bit before Phineas Fogg, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Did they have hot air balloons in the 17th century? Ah, uh, that's a good question. I don't know. I don't know. You, listener. Maybe later on. And that's but if you can only see it from the air, what's the point of it? Because I suppose you could be along the opposite hill looking at it. Impossible. It's on a slope, isn't it? So mm. well, you, you know, it's there, didn't you? You're coming, down the, you're coming into the valley. Yeah. There I you just go, wondered, there's a 108 foot tall. I just wondered if you could see it foot penis. from the land. I bet you, yeah, it's on a slope. Mm. Okay. It's not flat, it's, it's literally on the side. That makes more sense. It's on the side of a hill, yeah. No point putting this big thing up and then thinking, hang on, no, <laughs> yeah, only the birds can see it. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure you can see it from the road, can't you, if you drive? Can you? Yeah, yeah it's, it is I literally think. on the side mm-hmm. of a hill. Yeah. Well, it was a big endeavour, wasn't it, that to go and get all this tour? But I'm essentially realising that this, what publication is this from? The Metro. Yeah. The Metro. Well done, The Metro. This was a perfectly innocent and normal story <laughs> that you turned into a, a very, very strained hand job sort of yeah. fun. That's the world we live in today, mate. Clickbait, you gotta get them clicks. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Well, click me. It's better than jailbait. Um, sorry, <laughs> <there you go. laughs> on that note, <laughs> on that note I think we should wrap I think it up. We should probably end. So, oh, it's this. Crack on with the main cut and thrust of today's topic, Haunted Battlefields. I've got seven for you. Okay. Yep. Yep. Gettysburg, the American Civil War. Was that the one that went from 1861 to 1861? 1861 to 1861, the American Civil War. Yes. The Gettysburg Address. That was after the battle. Okay. Fought between July 1st and July 3rd in 1863 in and around the town of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. The battle involved the largest number of casualties of the entire war and is often described as the war's turning point. See, at this point, things are on a par. Everyone's losing a lot of guys, but the South are probably just ahead. They haven't got the manpower or the supplies. But they're doing really well because they've got a guy called Robert E. Lee in charge. Mm. You know, the car, the General Lee. Hey. Named after him. Oh, man. It's another thing that's been taken from us. But The yeah. Dukes of Hazard. Hey, do you see that? Oh, they, they did the film of it. That's a lot of remake, mm. though, didn't they? And they had to... There's that, have you ever seen it, the movie remake? No, I haven't, actually. I think I have. There's a, a fairly, quote, humorous scene where uh, they drive the General Lee through a black neighbourhood. Mm. Mm. And they are questioned upon why there is a... a Confederate a, flag yeah, on the roof. I can't remember yeah, how they get I think it's Starsky and Hutch, I've seen. But comedy oh, ensues. But I do think it's a little bit extreme. Sorry, it'll be a very quick tangent, but the fact that the Dukes of Hazard is completely stricken from the record now. You can't. It's no longer on TV. You can't buy the DVDs. The merchandise is now fucking, like, overinflated prices on eBay and everything, all because of that flag. But it didn't mean that in that context, did it? Or did it? I don't know. Well, I think it's... The South... Mm. Yeah, the, that flag is, for better or worse, a part of their culture, isn't it? Yeah. 13 Confederate states that broke away from the Union, the Civil War ensued. And it is part of their culture, whether you like it or not. Yeah. That's what it stands for, I think, is that... But not every Southerner was a slave owner. Mm. A lot of the guys doing the fighting certainly weren't. Yeah. No, but that was the predominant thing that they fought on. It was slavery and states' rights as well. Yeah. And the fact that the, the South saw themselves as the, the real America, the North had gone soft and, mm. and West European and industrial, and the South was the real America. 
But the now, south will got, rise again. It all depends in which in which context it's used. If it's at home and you're flying the American flag and the Confederate flag, because yeah. you see yourself as both or whatever, yeah. that's fine. But if you were to protest and you're waving it in a black man's face, yeah, then you've got problems. Yeah. I suppose if you flew the Union flag over the Confederate flag and flew both, you could say you could argue that, hey, I'm a Southerner, but I'm also part of the Union. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know America, American listeners. You can you can inform us on that actually. And what's is it acceptable to fly that flag? No, it's really not anymore. Is it, is That's why. Literally, I'm not joking. I mean, I've seen the dudes at the because they were removing the Confederate War statues, yeah. weren't they? That's what I'm yeah. not exaggerating. The Dukes yeah, of Hazard. Yeah. The Who, Dukes of Hazard as a show, as an entity, has yeah. now been cancelled. It's, it's just gone. It's gone because of that flag. It's so I'm assuming record. then, I'm extrapolating that out that. Flying that flag on your porch is probably. But if you had a union well. flag flying with it and above it. Uh, but in this day and age, though, you I think you know what it's like now. That is enough for somebody to label you a Nazi. That's very true. And the, one of the interesting things, because I haven't been able to express myself very well on this, but one of the problems with like just labeling people Nazi willy nilly. Is we also like to say violence against Nazis is okay, don't we? Yeah. Punch a Nazi. So, like, wrongly labelling somebody a Nazi could actually be quite a fucking dangerous thing to do to yeah, them. Yeah, of course it is. Um, yeah. And I well, guess this comes into it. But, like you said, that to, to like a, you could be a totally, completely unracist guy who's proud to live in the South, but is also proud that, like you say, American, fly both. It would be, I guess, the British equivalent would be, all right, let's say if you lived in the black country. Uh, which is an industrial area of the UK for international listeners. They have their own flag, the Black Country flag. Yes, yeah. So yeah. outside Cornwall your house, does it. Cornwall's mm. got their own. Flag. Yeah, yeah. So outside your house, like you say, you might have the the cross of Saint George, the Union Jack, and the Black Country flag. I wouldn't care just if they it. just had the Black Country Me flag. Either. But yeah. uh, but like we said, it's all about context yeah. and kind of that flag. Like you said, even if the guy flying it on his porch means no harm to anyone, it's what. The connotations, its its meaning has been taken over, basically, well, and hijacked, I think. In this country, Cornwall, would mm. de- there, was a, there was a Cornish independence movement and quite a yeah. prominent one. Still is. Yeah, yeah that's exactly, yeah. Isn't that flag black with it? Yeah, it's, it's blue, cross. blue, black, grown, black mm. cross. And they're very, they, they demand Cornwall's independence. Yeah. And I suppose them, if you see, occasionally you do see the odd sort of bumper sticker with that on. Mm. You know, trotting about, you do see it. It's not. It's not just Cornwall. It's other counties, Yorkshire. Yeah, I think they've got a prominent leave the UK. I think you probably hit the nail on the head when you said earlier about the like having the flag flying outside your front porch because you're proud to come from the south is one thing. Having it with the slogan "The South will rise again" spray painted on it, and like uh, you know, you're wearing your your fucking Grand Dragon outfit. <laughs> or your Confederate soldier uniform. Yeah. Which some guys did when they, uh, mm. they they were taking those statues down. There was there was young sort of chaps who were part of whatever movement was protesting it, mm. dressed as Confederate soldiers, holding the flag as the statues of various, mm. not just Robert E. Lee, various other generals were taken down. And I suppose um, if we really think about it, uh, and forgive us American listeners, you know, we, you know, we're ignorant Brits. Yeah, we're ignorant Brits. Like, if the war was literally over, more or less, the slave trade... Well, slavery, which, the North didn't like it, the yeah, South's so economy depended it. on it. So that's... Essentially, you could boil it down to maybe say it was over s- s- slavery, right? The, it was one of the most prominent Yeah, there were reasons. other causes. There so, states so, rights so what I'm saying, if one side is fighting to get rid of slavery and the other side isn't, the flag associated with the side that were fighting to keep slavery, yeah. you could see why that might yeah, be a, 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 not a cool well, flag for a black guy to see. So yeah, now that I've just yeah. thought about it, I think... In all fairness, it wasn't until later in the war that Lincoln issued the... Emanci- the, the, the war started over states' rights. Yes, okay. slavery was an issue, emancipation was an issue, freeing mm. the slaves was a big issue in America, but predominantly started over, sla- over states' rights. Right. It wasn't until, I think it was something like 1862, 1863, Lincoln issues the Emancipation Proclamation. And that's when he says, right, slavery's bad, and you ain't, we ain't doing it anymore. Yeah. And that's when the war became about slavery, freeing right. the slaves. So it already kicked off then. 
Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. This is we're talking 1863 for Gettysburg here. Yeah. Yeah, but again, it didn't come out the blue, did it? I mean, no, it was something that had been building, but he didn't yeah. have the support in Congress until that point to yeah, do it. They, they knew what his position on that. Absolutely, was. yeah. Okay. It was the Battle of Gettysburg involved the largest number of casualties in the entire war, wow. and it is the turning point. I mean, this is this, but this is Lee's last invasion of the North. The right. North had been invading the South for a couple of years and been rebuffed. Lee made a couple of attempts into the North. And remember, the North massively outnumbers the South in terms of manpower and industry. The South have got virtually fuck all. Mm. But they're taking all their supplies to the North because mm-hmm. they're doing really well. Because they've got people like Lee and Jackson and Beauregard, who, yes, now their names are like, put in distaste nowadays. Their statues have been taken down. But you have to look at things with the zeitgeist, don't you? The spirit of the times. Mm. Lee was offered command of the Northern Army. Because he was that good. Shit. And he went, you know what? And he struggled. He's like, oh, I'm a Virginian. And Virginia's like my home. And it's it's going to get it's gonna join the Confederacy. You know what? I'm going to leave. I'm going to go and fight for Virginia. Mm-hmm. Not just the state. I'm going to fight for my state. Almost heaven. West Virginia. <laughs> Take me. I can't listen to Country Roads. I get emotional over Kingsman 2. Oh, I haven't seen it. Oh, but that's one of my favourite songs. So, I'm just amazed to learn that the... The General Lee, the car, was named after the General Lee, the person. <laughs> yeah, and the thing is, you can always say, did he go? Did it? 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 But the thing, the thing is, with Lee, and, and like all the other, any other, any other general, I mean, even like you could argue Rommel wasn't a Nazi, just fought for his country. Lee fought for his state that had joined this other country. It doesn't take away from the fact they were good generals or, mm. or even cared about their men. Mm. It was the fact that they were on the wrong side. And Is this a long-winded way of you trying to uh, defend Hitler? No. <laughs> no, I'm just no, joking. No, I'm, but, joking. I'm joking. Not every, but, Ger- not every uh, German general was a Nazi. They were fighting for their country. And some of them were very good at their jobs. Well, and if they didn't do the it, same they'd as be the dead South. as well, wouldn't they? The, you know, the, the Confederates. Anyway, I'll move on. <laughs> Union losses, right? So we were looking at twenty-three thousand on the day, which is over a couple of days. Confederate losses estimated up to twenty-eight thousand, twenty-three to twenty-eight thousand. Mm-hmm. Right. Jesus, all killed with like bayonets, hand-to-hand muskets. No, the machine guns. guns. No, 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 machine no, guns. no, no, like in the Civil War. No, it was. Um, it was the other hand crank one. No, no, uh, towards the very end. Oh, okay. But not when this was happening. And so, so what they, I'm getting at is this is not like massive cannons. bombs hitting the battlefield. No, no. This is yeah, oh, the cannons, were, the cannons were yeah, explosive shells, but they had their rifled muskets, so they're still using a ramrod to mm. clamp things down. The dirty, dirty rifles dirty were starting fighting. to come in, but only the North had them. Mm. You know, the, like I say, the South just was just more and more concerned about trying to keep everyone fed, clothed, and armed. I've yeah. seen the Patriot, Mel Gibson, where yeah. the cannonball takes everybody's fucking legs yeah. off. Well, that's, so the thing the with, that's the thing with cannonballs is <laughs> they just literally they're just big iron solid balls that plow mm. through mm. and you're coming at the enemy in tight <laughs> ranks we're still fighting in ranks as lines columns now, the, the main event of Gettysburg is actually a famous charge called Pickett's Charge right and this was the turning point of the battle the main event the main event I love how you talk about it like it's Wrestlemania that's what I keep you interested <laughs> <laughs> It was an infantry assault <laughs> ordered against the Union positions because Lee was like, right, we're winning it. Yeah? Mm. And they were at that point. Like, We've got this. We can have this. I'm going to be bold. I'm going to attack. So there's like 12,000 men, 12,500 men, that, of which the South is running out of. They're outnumbered anyway fighting this battle. Yeah. So Lee sends like 12,500 men, right, take that position. Take the... They take 8,000 casualties, dead, wounded, captured. And Lee actually has the, 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 at least the, although he disputed it later in life, a lot of witnesses mm. that he stood there welcoming the survivors back, saying, I'm really sorry, it was my fault. Because mm. he well, did not. It's not going to have your leg it, grow back, is no. it, General? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and, it was, and you haven't even invented any decent drugs yet, so. <laughs> <laughs> now, they had ether, they, they, did, they did have ether to right. put you out during an operation, but the problem was. There was never enough of it. Yeah. If you got wounded early on, you'd probably have some ether. Mm. Wounded later in the day, now nah, they're just taking your leg off. Mm. And I think a good surgeon could do it in about a minute and 30 seconds, mm. something like that. About 90 seconds, he could have your leg off. Uh. There was actually um, 
<laughs> an operation that had a 300% mortality rate. I didn't know that. Because uh, the surgeon, the doctor, Dr. Surgeon, barber surgeon probably, yeah. was taking this guy's leg off. Mm -hmm. Right? During the operation, he accidentally, because uh, he was thrusting the saw through so vigorously, going for a record, mm -hmm. uh, accidentally sliced his opponent, his, his uh, assistant. Fuck. Right? And he also managed to slice his own thigh. So the guy who was having his leg off died of gangrene, and the surgeon and the doctor died of infection. Uh, so at a th one yeah. operation had a 300% mortality rate. <laughs> Carry on civil war. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, the limbs at the hospitals were piled high. Mm. You get shot in the leg by a... And they're like 50 calibre bullets mm. they're using. Right, you're, you're, if you get hit in the bow and it's shattered, there's no coming back from that in that day. No. There's no... They're just taking your leg off. Mm. And that's it. I mean, the li limbs are piled high. You go to the hospital as a wounded man, you're shot in the arm or the leg, and the first thing you see is a pile of cut off limbs. <laughs> mm. yeah. I'd just fall on my own bayonet. Well, you, I mean, people did survive. <laughs> well, obviously. They, they did. did. But. Infection rates were high, but he had a better chance of survival in the American Civil War than he had in the Peninsula War 40 years earlier. It was getting slightly better. It was things were progressing. That's the thing is the war, medicine, war has always driven medicine. Of course. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can heal our soldiers faster than the enemy. That's it, get them back in there. Yeah. Now, obviously, you can't have that much trauma without having people saying they've seen ghosts. Mm -hmm. Do you know, my boss said to me, when I told him it was going to take at least four weeks for a bone to heal, he made some weird comment where he was like, oh, I bet if you were a Manchester United player, they'd have your back in two. And I was thinking, oh, yeah, but I'm not. Harold, I don't have access to the fucking world's best fucking science. Sports scientist, <laughs> yeah, you're going to spend you? two weeks in an oxygen tank. Oh, yeah, exactly. Like, I'm not floating gonna... in gel, having yeah. a small <laughs> robot exactly. heal your arm. I'm going to dedicate every waking second of my life to healing this bone. <laughs> Like, with a team of people around. <coughs> Fucking hell. No, they put some plaster of Paris on it and say, sit still for four weeks. <laughs> Fucking hell, bless him. Oh, well. Capitalist pig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he cares nothing for you guys, only the profits. <laughs> Up the revolution. <laughs> the drivers will rise again. Oh, man. It'll all be automated soon anyway, Harold. <laughs> that much um, emotion in a place that having some kind of residual overspill some sort of spiritual maybe not aftermath. spiritual maybe just the, the, that much emotion that much energy in one place mm. no <laughs> <laughs> well, well without getting all woo 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 uh, <laughs> we, we have the three of us all here uh, and I'm sure vast majority of people listening at certain points in your life been part of a, a huge crowd in various situations, but you've been part of a huge crowd that's there to watch a band. You've been on a march, like a giant nationwide yeah. sort of you know, million man march type thing. So you felt that atmosphere, and it's fucking real, isn't it? It's yeah. tangible. The there's almost like you can fucking touch it. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's something about something to be said for emotion and feelings being energy and it yeah, being yeah. released from us somehow and being able to like so i don't know where does it together. all go yeah what? and if it's all that many people witnessing so you felt it like in a joyous way you've That's been just a chemical yeah but let's say reaction you, in your brain isn't it but let's say you've been part of a you, you're getting flooded with endorphins that's my point you felt a crowd watching a band, a huge festival crowd, 100,000 people, you're all there for something joyous and you can feel it, yay, this is magical. Mm. What if you're all, 100,000 of you or 60,000, how many are on the battlefield, all simultaneously experiencing something fucking horrific? Yeah. Well, you're not you know, the you're, same... You're, but the guy next to you just and the, and the three ranks behind him just get mm. taken out by a massive lead ball... Steel ball, and you're like, oh yeah, shit! But I don't go back to the empty arenas and uh, you know and, and feel the energy that's still there or see ghost mm. moshers. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but my point that I, I, yeah, I guess that's where we're going with this. Well, maybe the negative energy is stronger than the positive energy. I mean, you've got people leaving the world. That's well, true. I've never been to well. 
We don't know what happens on this side. That's true. Probably nothing. We don't know, do we? I don't know. I've fucked myself up anyway, stoned a few you... times. Have you ever done this to yourself? Trying to imagine dying? Yeah, and he's imagining nothingness, but you can still... Co- Try trying to, to imagine an ultimate it. blackness, but still being able to see it. Mm, it's so... F- I fucked myself up stoned a few times. I'd be like, going to sleep, but the ultimate sleep, but then there's no... Are you still... What is our consciousness? And will mm-hmm. it still be there? Oh, my God, it's so terrifying. <laughs> oh! These are the big questions that yeah. science doesn't have answers for yet. Probably never will. That's it. Until oh, someone, at the end of the day, until someone comes back and legitimately says, hey... Mm. There's well, an afterlife. You, you do get near death. Mm. Yeah, but oh, I be, think there's a science explanation can be to it. Then, like, it's because you know the DMT. You get, your brain's still active. Your brain basically the brain's some, to die, something it? massively traumatic happens to you, and you're dying. Uh, you're in, let's say, you get hit by a car. You're bleeding out in the street, whatever. Apparently, your brain gives you such a giant dump of DMT that is yeah. so powerful that it will take away all your pain and completely relax you as kind of a survival mechanism because yeah. the, the more your heart's pumping the more your blood is jumping yeah, yeah. Yeah. takes you to an absolute place of calm also a little bit trippy so that might be where the white light mm. tunnel well, thing no, things, that's all been put into us though hasn't it mm. that whole white light friends and family the pets Billy being there but that's, it's, that's all been Put into us over mm. two thousand years but of this you, vision of heaven. But if you think there's not many saying they've come back from hell, is there? Now, but you see, you're, so you're saying that people's explanation of it afterwards is influencing the, the, our expectation. Yeah, your of it. Brain's but, a, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. think I think that makes sense. But I think this dump of DMT is literally that powerful. You are tripping fucking balls essentially at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I um, agree with that too. Yeah. So like maybe visions of happiness and things the good things in your life do come as a natural oh, it's course, just it's yeah, just trying yeah, to get you it. to die like as slowly and painlessly as it mm-hmm. can that's your own brain that's the yeah. power of your own brain and i'm not sure why self preservation uh, isn't it it's, it's, so so this idea of not knowing on the other side i think cuz there was a re- a story going around recently where a woman who was clinically dead wrote something didn't she like white light or something she wrote mm. something in scribble and then they brought her back and she's like oh it's proof of heaven and like no, it's proof that your brain is this incredibly complex computer that is like doing all this systems damage control, like, yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. pulling levers and closing off things and oh fucking hell, <laughs> just it's to like, get you. Can't deal with you now. Put you into a fucking hallucinate. Yeah, shut your brain yeah. off, and we'll try and keep this yeah. body alive. Yeah, that's it, isn't it? Yeah, basically. it's like basically right, we'll keep the body going. Just feed them, yeah. feed them shit, feed you, them shit. You and your emotions are not fucking helping <laughs> yeah. right now you are this close to death uh, you know mm. so yeah an idea of something but we don't know what's in no. the side but does that mean that your conscious doesn't get through that then if the body dies then what happens to the electrochemical energy who knows yeah. do I sound like one of these people we take the piss that's out that's the problem of isn't it <laughs> at the end of the show so, uh, this is the thing I mean like visitors will report that you know, the sounds of the battle the war cries of the soldiers the screams of the wounded up to 10,000 ghosts haunt the field. And, and it's not just the battlefield, it's the historic buildings, especially those used as the hospitals. Mm. And again, it's like a yeah. culture thing, isn't it? People, yeah. A lot of people report it, so, it, it, you know... Yeah, you go there expecting in. to see something. It yeah. almost, I which guess that could feed the energy. To, that might, my friend Damien, as a Polish guy, has been to Auschwitz. You've been yeah. as well. I've been, oh, I've been to Saxonhausen, right. which is outside Berlin, yeah. But he told me, I asked him, like, well, what's it like? He's like, well, it's horrible. You feel. Yeah, yeah, you a, do. You feel a fucking dark thing. But is that what you've just said, Mike? A feedback loop of going, mm. well, you know, before you went there. Yeah, it's in a what if you, you don't jump off the fucking bus. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. Party <laughs> balloons. <laughs> that would be a well, good. Some people are sticks having a rave. Do, do, do. That'd be a Mike, good experiment, Mike. 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 Yeah. Somebody who knows nothing about it. Blindfold them, whatever, dump them in Auschwitz without telling them where we're taking them and say they feel, if they get that same feeling or if they just walk mm. around like, well, this is shit. In fact, it's about it? 95% of all teenagers. Don't oh, know. Right. So this is... <laughs> no, well, they take the is, If you took the right bus full of people to Auschwitz, they would get off the train with yeah. party poppers and hats, wouldn't they? Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> the Brexit bus. The Brexit bus. <laughs> the Nigel Farage bus, yeah. Because they think he was a holiday camp, don't they? Well, and I mean, I know a Holocaust. I've I've known a Holocaust denier. I think and I met one as well. I was actually just 
I stood there mouth agape at mm. uh, what she was telling me. I was like, what the? How can you believe that? <sighs> Been fed the... It's one of my favourite things on Facebook at the moment. It makes me laugh my ass off. People who are against Corbyn who post these type of, um, like, uh, brainwash memes and, like, comrade Corbyn and all that, and they're like... Basically, I saw a meme basically, basically implying that any Corbyn supporter had been brainwashed by the media. So I'm sitting there thinking, well, where the fuck do you think you've got your idea that he's full of shit from, you fucking yeah. clown? You absolute fucking tool. Like, you've been fed the other side of the story. And are you not falling for... But the fucking uh, people's inability... To... Cognitive dissonance. Yeah, yeah. basically. And it's, it's brainwashing as well. It's been years of brainwashing to get this one. Look at the sun. Yeah. It was at one point the most popular paper in this country. I used to buy it. So did I. Yeah. Because it me- worked. had a good sports section and everything was yeah. like easily read quickly yeah. because it's written Perfect for an eight year old working basically. class man on so, his lunch break. Basically. Yeah, you <laughs> scan through. Oh, there's some tits there. Oh, what's yeah. that in the sport? Oh, hang on, Boris wants to leave the EU. Yeah. It's. it's but, but if you, t- if you say to them. Uh, look at North Korea, they'll, they'll go, oh yeah, they're brainwashed and laugh at them. Exactly, they're thinking that they're any different. It's yeah. ridiculous, isn't it? Same and, thing. Yeah, exactly. And this is why I'm trying desperately. I know it fucking makes me angry and I end up coming here ranting every weekend, but I think going on Twitter and things like that and reading the opinions of actual people... This is what people, I, to do. I do know, yeah, but I don't kind of... I try and gauge that, because what I like about Twitter is seeing what's trending. You can literally go on trending and see what are the top mm. 20 hashtags, and so that's how you know that's what the fucking country is talking about. Hashtag the abolish, the, abolish the monarchy this um, week. Uh, yeah, it's so, so I do try and sort of gauge... This is why we're talking to my my girlfriend's nephews. Like shocked that I knew about sort of gender politics and things like that. It's like, Mate, I'm not sixty six. I'm thirty six, and I have access to all the same information that you do. Yeah. Like, I try and keep my finger on. I try and have a little bit of an idea of what's going on and what people are talking about. And, and I'm not going to get that. And the BBC, essentially, I and I've lost faith in them as well. And I used to be somebody who picked them up. Yeah, I, I, I keep the app on my phone, the BBC News app, but that's mainly just to. More sort of verify shit. Uh, I think you know, we're like naive as fuck someone, to think they're not in the government's pocket. Of course. Oh, is, is, maybe just look not, at the, who's not the director verify. general. The director mm. general is a, is a, is a, like a millionaire. Yeah. They all stick together, mate. Of course they do. But I used to big up the bit like at uni. Yeah. I used to like we all need to appreciate the BBC, pay our fee because other countries don't have this an independent thing that's got you know, and on economics no and politics, it. it's right wing. Is it? Yeah, that's so, that's their default yeah. sort of setting. Everything else, it's sort of, it's liberal and you know, the arts and stuff. Yeah, like that. I yeah. think you're not Channel Four. Specific, you're always, no. Channel Four is great. I, I like Channel Four better than. I like. Else. What's the main guy? The um, the Indian dude. Uh, oh shit! I might be really insulting him. I don't know if he is Indian. But Christian you know Murphy. I mean? Yeah, yeah he's, he's been on there for for years. And yeah, he's, yeah like, he's great. Actually, he gets yeah. a list. Hollywood people to walk out. No, not this. Ways to change it. the world. Oh, awesome! It's good. I'll right. give that a go. Yeah. He's, he's, he's he's a good he, on he just asks the question, doesn't he? He's, he's, if he doesn't yeah. get an answer, he'll ask it again mm. and again and again until he gets an answer. He is good, and so he should have. That's what. Mm. That's the standard our reporters should but be. But even at. even there, you know, not perfect. Do you know no, they're not. But that's no. the the standard that they should be at. If you're not getting an answer. Don't let them deflect it. Don't let them move on. No, no, you answer the question. You're yeah, accountable yeah. to the people, and we're p- giving you the voice to speak to the people. But this is where things. Now are... we're going to press freedom from haunted battlefields. Well, <laughs> and just to say that we're about forty fourth in the world for press freedom behind. We are, yeah. Namibia and Suriname. <sighs> They've got more press freedom than their countries. Wow. Well, well, let's move there. And I want our sovereignty back <laughs> by Brexit. I got told to leave the country if I didn't like it oh, on, on Twitter. Yeah, fuck off. Yeah, I was like, cunts. More answers. What? They don't understand. Can we just have a little yeah. pause there, dude? So then we just have a, a little bit of the, the sightings, that, well, the stuff it gets. But we had the 10,000 ghosts that haunt the battlefield. A nearby historic building experience as well, especially those users that make shit hospitals. Visitors report ghostly apparitions, eerie noises, odd lights, doors open, shut and lock on their own. Lights flicker and objects move freely. It's a poltergeist activity. Mm. Apparitions, mm. full spectra apparitions, like the <laughs> class threes at least. 
I like your style. Yeah. Was it free floating spectral apparitions? <laughs> what, what would Raymond Stance think? Well, I think, like we were saying earlier, I think there's something to that much evil happening in one place. To it. Is there some Isn't physical? evil it's a human concept? I don't think it's evil in a way because both sides think they're right. You don't join up to literally put your body in the line unless you think it's right, do you? But, either, but if you think about it from like a sort of spiritual point of view, each soldier on either side, regardless of what they think of their cause... That's true, especially in a civil war. They're still war. just two men murdering each other. And in a they? civil war, you could have brothers mm. fighting each other, mm. one size to the north, one yeah, size to the south, and it did happen. Yeah, and that's the thing civil fathers fight sons, brothers fight brothers, yeah. family members fight each other. That's what's a civil war, yeah? We're not yeah, fighting any Ain't nothing civil at war, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> what we got here is <laughs> failure to communicate. Yeah. Some men Fucking love you that just song. can't reach. Oh, that's a good song, man. Yeah. How many young men are Oh, should we move on to, um, to Passchendaele? You ever heard of Passchendaele? Oh, yeah. Do you know why I've heard of Passchendaele? Iron Maiden. Yeah, my <laughs> fucking best history teachers on the world. In the world, Passchendaele. I mean, Iron Maiden, yeah. <laughs> I've seen the film. It's a good film. Yeah. Uh, this went up from the 31st of July to the 10th of November, 1917. Mm. That is three months, one week, and three days. Mm. The British Empire versus the German Empire, with a few French on our side, and Belgians. Casualties are still disputed, but the British Empire lost in the three months, remember? Just over three months. 200,000 to 448,614 dead, wounded, or captured. Wow. That's incredible, isn't the it? Germans, Half a million men. Yeah. The Germans, 217,000 to 410,000. Now, in preparation to this assault, the British had been mining on the German positions on the Messine Ridge. And then by June 1917, 21 mines had been filled with nearly 1 million pounds of explosives. Yes, I've seen another film like that called, I think it's Hill 37 mm. or something. And it's about them men that That's them, right. And that's what um, Tommy Shelby does. In Peaky Blinders, yeah. he's a play kicker, he's a, he's a miner. Mm. They d and the Germans, remember, countermine. So what you do when you, when you countermine is you listen to the ground and you dig your own mines, hoping to burst into one of their tunnels. Oh, wow. It's a completely inexact science. You're doing it all yeah. by sound. Remember... The guys who are doing the mining have got muffled pickaxes, the pickaxes wrapped in cloth, <laughs> to muffle the sound as much as they can. They're all being as quiet as possible, because they can hear the Germans yeah. mining, trying to countermine, and as, as every few feet you go further, you've got to prop it up, you've got to put wooden supports up. And did they put like a million tons of TNT? They did, something? a million, a million pounds of explosives. The Germans knew the mining and attempted to counter mine it, but were surprised at the extent of the British efforts. Yeah, it went off once, didn't it, and there was no trace of anybody. Yeah, it, it fucking annihilated this ridge. There was nothing left yeah. on top of that hill. They heard it in Dublin. Fuck. Yeah, it's in Belgium. They heard it in London, and they heard it in Dublin. Wow. They heard this fucking... It's the largest non-nuclear explosion. Or one of the largest non-nuclear explosions. Fuck. So you're on top of that ridge, sat there in your dugout. And you know they're mine underneath you, but you cut your boys are down there, we'll find them. And next thing you know, you've just got a blinding white flash. <sighs> and that's the end of you. Um, to quote Maiden, Laying low in a blood-filled trench, Killing time till my very own death. On my yeah. face, I can feel the falling rain. Never see my friends again. No, and that's the thing. Do, it do, was. Do, 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 do. Yeah, it was the wettest August in thirty years. So you got the fucking mud, the damp, the cold, the, ugh, the bombs, the shells, the, shells, the, shells. the gas, the machine gun fire, the rifle Horrific. fire, the sniper fire. They weren't. In their concert, remember, they were rotated in and out. Still. The problem was the weather was so bad in August and the following months that the only way to get across to get, because the trenches were being flooded and mm. blown in, they used duck boards, wooden slatted boards mm. to get across. You're advancing in the open, even at night, mm. the German shells are landing. Units are losing 50% of their strength by getting the front line. And you slip off that duck board because you're knackered. 
you're carrying 60 pounds of kit, you know, you, fall, the mud. you slip off that duck board into a shell hole full of water, you're dead, no one's getting you out of there. The same war is hell. This is that's, as close to hell as you get. Yeah. On yeah. There's some poet said that, didn't he? Some war, there was a lot of battlefield poets back then. Wilfred Owen, um, wasn't it? But somebody yeah. talked about because the sheer amount of because I know I'm not as, as into it as you are on that, but I've thought about it at times, and, and I am in definitely, definitely interested in World War Two and World War One, things like that. But I've sat there and tried to comprehend through Dan Carlin, basically mm. listening to him, trying. His World War One special is excellent. Yeah, I knew nothing about it. school. Taught me nothing about World War One, but Dan Carlin told me how it started. Over an eight-hour pod, but anyway, well, like, other than that, I think. started because uh, well, uh, the Kaiser was snubbed by his cousins. Well, was it, it a was failed all, suicide attempt. It failed as, well, no, it was a successful assassination. It was all basically a, a war of alliance. That you had um, France, Britain, Russia on the one side, and you had the Germans, the Austro-Hungarians on the other. Italy joined in later on on our side. On the, I think basically right, the the kind of, you had the naval arms race, remember? We, we said about it before yeah. the naval arms race. We had the largest navy. Germany wanted a big, na big navy. France had a big navy. We had the two to one formula, so we have twice the ships of the next yeah. largest power. But the royal family had played a major part in it. Of course, it, it was the Germany. Kaiser wanted to be respected by his cousins George and the Russian guy, the Tsar. Nicholas. Yeah. And he was sort of like the butt of the. Yeah, he was a runt of litter, basically. Yeah. He got a withered arm. He wasn't as yeah. he wasn't a strapping aristocrat like the strapping king. Like and obviously, he, he felt offence to that and wanted to show them. Yeah, yeah, and that's and it was basically a king's gang fuck of alliances. Like if well, if they attack you, we'll attack them, and we'll all mobilise. And mm. the fact the assassination was carried out on the air to the Austro-Hungarian Empire, where the Germans are allied with, so they declared war. And then the Germans had to declare war. I wonder if that was a false flag. Oh, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Crisis no. actors. Most yeah, of, no, was, no, not crisis actors. I'm, I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> Things, I mean, the whole... Sandy Hook! Shit, it, sorry. So they have, the, they have the initial attack, and everyone's really impressed, because the Canadians take that ridge, and we take we were expected to take 50% casualties, and we didn't. We were really, you know, it was everything went off as planned, and then the next two, three months, it just devolved into attack. Mm -hmm. Encounter attack in the mud, the shells and the rain, and the shit food. Everybody thought the cavalry would win it. Yeah, we can't. Well, that's it. And they couldn't use tanks because the terrain wasn't good enough. And the we didn't have tanks. Yeah, 17. 1917. Yeah, this is 1917. Oh, okay. Then, uh, yeah, yeah. Here's in the Menin Gate in Belgium where they play the last post every night. No. You ever heard of that? Nope. Every night. But I like that song. Every night, a bugler, they have an honour guard, mm. is this big marble gate. Every inscriber is the name of every single Belgian, French, British a soldier that died at the battle. And they play the last post every night, oh, without fail, every single night. And that's the creepiest fucking song going. Yeah, I love it, but it's sad, isn't it? It's yeah, oh yeah. I don't think I know it. You, you've heard it on Remembrance yeah, Sunday. Really. Yeah, okay. Burr, burr, burr. Actually, you want to if we pause it, you find it on yeah. YouTube, and we'll play it for you. So, alright, then the last post, this is.
It's pretty haunting. Yeah. I was only giggling because it literally it is burnt into my memory, mm. Arnold Rimmer. <laughs> <laughs> the way he does it. <laughs> he does it brilliantly. Yeah. So yes, I do know the last part. Yeah. But yeah, very haunting, yeah. yeah. So what, do, so can you hear this the, ghostly... No, they play that every night in the Men I Engage, but in nearly... Every night? Every night. Fine. Every single night that fail. Go, and yeah, she's not coming out. back, mate. <laughs> <laughs> The nearly 100,000 of the soldiers who died were never identified and now villages in the, uh, and locals in the villages around the area report the sounds of battle, screams, gunfire and gunfire. So, yeah. The next door needs to turn his fucking telly down as well. <laughs> he's, he's got yeah. to fucking die on three. Watch Hacksaw Ridge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's in that actually. No, it's a fucking good movie. That is brilliant. Yeah, fucking brilliant. That guy was a was a badass, oh, hardest bastard ever, and wouldn't carry a rifle. He was a, he's a medic. He's I'm not carrying a rifle for religious reasons. They tried to get out the army and everything, mm. and they eventually give him his chance. And he's in this fucking meat grinder on top of this hill, and all his mates are dead. He or wounded. And he he managed to get out. So I'm like, how many guys did he get out? For a lot. I can't remember. But yes, it's pretty, he's just like every goes and every time he was lowering them down but on a rope mm. by hand. He'd have oh, no wow. gun, he'd run out into the battlefield, Fuck save his man. fellow soldiers. That's awesome. And he, every time he sees like, like Lord, just because he, he was quite a religious guy, obviously, because so he wouldn't carry a gun. He was like, God, just let me do one more, let who, me do one more, who, and then he'd go and get another, and he'd let me do one more. Who played him in the movie? Oh, that's a good question, actually. Because there is a movie, uh, there. the guy who played Spider Man, I think. Uh, Toby Maguire. No. The uh, new one. Garfield. Yeah. Andrew Garfield. There you go. Yeah. 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 Very good film. He like hates it. Mondays. Does he? I don't know. Bob Geldof. It was a shit <laughs> Garfield joke. Uh, he loves lasagna. Yeah. And hates Mondays. That's it. <sighs> so on the, um, <laughs> let's move on to the next one. The Battle of Culloden. The Battle of Culloden. 16th of April, 1746. The last battle fought on British soil. It was the Highlanders, wasn't it? It was. What, it was the, what year was this? Seventeen forty-six. That's the last battle fought on British soil. Mm-hmm. Doesn't like the Blitz and all that kind. That's no. not a battle. That's just us getting yeah. bombed. Battle of Britain was fought in the air on the ground. Mm. Last battle fought on right. British soil. This w- one was in. Sorry. Seventeen forty-six. Seventeen forty-six. We've done all right. Uh, then. What about Northern Ireland? Is that a battle? Or is no, that it's a recent operation. Uh, yeah. Because for insurance purposes. <laughs> was it? Yeah, genuinely. Get the new soldiers. Yeah. Come out, ye blackened no. hands. Come out and fight me like a man. No, let's not branch into the Irish Republican songs, please. <laughs> With armoured cars and tanks and guns, they came to take away our sons. Yeah. Never take the men okay. behind the wire. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'm not pro IRA, it's just I'm pro Alan Partridge. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking and if you haven't seen that series, none of the last 30 seconds would have made any fucking sense. But anyway, back to the war, Ben. Back to the war. Culloden, yeah, so sorry. Fought between the ruling hills of Hanover, which is our, our queen now, they're from Hanover in Germany. Yeah, the Saxe Coburg Goethe. Yeah. yeah. And That's uh, their name. Yeah, it is. They change it to uh, change Windsor. It to Windsor. Uh, just During the First World War, wasn't it? Just before the First World War, mm. or after, because of that wave of anti-German sentiment, and the King, the King George IV? Fifth? Is it a bit like... They, they basically so, said, I'm not being a foreigner in my own damn country, and changed his name. So you're saying that the, the royals sort of smelt in the air what was coming and sort of preemptively made action yeah. to protect themselves. A bit like how if you really stop and sniff really hard, you can actually smell... Prince Andrew burning his clothes and all his documents as we speak. That's the one. <laughs> yeah, you can't burn that away, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> That's the stench of underage. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, and Jacobite, you're the Stuarts, you're the Tudors of the Stuarts when I we were in school. What does Rimmer say once? Was it was it short back and sides, both sides, no score draw? <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yes, yeah. Cavaliers and the round heads. Long yeah. hair. Basically, whoever yeah. has the shortest haircut wins. That wins, yeah. 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 Vietnam, Vietnam, that's it. Vietnam no score draw. Both sides, no score draw. <laughs> it's kind of right in a way. Oh, well, no, the US lost. No, you'd well, argue. No, it was a no- negotiated peace. Okay. Technically a draw then. 
You'd, you'd think they got their asses you'd think running was, back on, onto your helicopters and desperately <laughs> trying to escape the island. <laughs> yeah, they've been won that one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't think you came to a draw. No, yeah, well, they came to it, hasn't yeah, They did destroy the American military for a decade. Good. Morale wise. You good. weren't there, man! You weren't there! Well, New Rambo film trailer though. Oh fuck yeah. 18th of September, you wanna go? Oh fuck yeah, it looks incredible. <laughs> got the old gym with the reclining chairs, we got some booze. Looks absolutely awesome. I'm the only thing she's got. Oh, oh, she's just found out he's got a niece and you kidnapped her, you fucking mental! <laughs> it only ends one way! <laughs> you're taking down the fucking hardest battle of the Vietnam War! He knows how to do Home Alone but more lethal! He single handedly cleaned up Burma about ten years yeah, ago! And he won the war for the Mujahideen against the Russians! We watched that in the week, didn't we? We watched we it did. last week! Fucking classic! <laughs> Little bit dodgy, isn't it, though? No, it's, it's politically. It's, especially when it's, at the end, it says dedicated to the brave and valiant people of Afghanistan. Yeah, it literally does, doesn't it? It does, yeah, yeah. Mujahideen fighters. Yeah. How times They morphed into ISIS. Because we trained them. Yeah. They literally sent the SAS to train them. And then wondered why they were really hard to beat. And we prop up Saudi Arabia that trains them. Yes. Anyway, so the Stuarts. Yeah, Bonnie oh, Prince Charles. Two years of the Stuarts. Yeah, I have, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was the guy in charge of this one. It was called the 45. It was a rebellion against... Because the Stuarts said, hang on, we've got a better claim to the throne than these Germans. Mm-hmm. We've been living in exile all these years, but the Scots support us. So we'll come back to Scotland, we'll get support amongst the Highlanders, because they're our main core base, and we'll, we'll advance. And he did really well at mm-hmm. first. He won a battle. They marched down to Manchester. They got as far as Manchester. Mm. Yeah, they got some northern English support, and then the government forces regrouped under the Duke of Cumberland, who was um, the brother of the king at the time, mm. or the son, sorry, the son of the king, mm. and they were pushed back to Scotland. Now, he had 8,000 men, because a lot of our men were fighting in Europe and India at the time, so mm. we didn't have many troops in the country. Charles Stuart had 7,000, but Charles, Bonnie Prince Charlie, decided, hey, because uh, the day before the battle is the Duke's birthday, and he's given them all the day off and given them <laughs> some booze, what we're going to do is we're going to do this awesome idea I've just had. We're going to march through the night and we'll take them by surprise in the morning. Problem was they got lost. No. And night marches, remember, there's no, there's no residual glow anymore. Mm. Even in the suburbia that we live in, where we have got mm. fields and open spaces, there's always that residual glow from the cities. No, there's nothing at this point. It's pitch fucking black. <laughs> and you're trying to march across the, high, the the lowlands of Scotland with its little dips and troughs and brooks mm. and babbling streams. And they get lost. And in the morning, and then they decide to go back to where they started from. They're all absolutely fucking shattered because they've walked through the night. Mm. Government forces are nicely well rested. And they meet the Highlanders on the ground of their choosing. Now, the Highlanders won the first battle by doing the Highland Charge. Right. No, they draw their claymores. They've got their uh, little shields. Mm. You've seen it? You've seen, the, you've seen the mm. Braveheart. Their battered Mars bars. Their battered Mars bars and their haggis. And they're playing the bagpipes. And they run at you screaming with their kilts flapping in the wind and their genitals exposed. Wow. <laughs> and that's probably enough to scare the shit out of anybody. Mm. But this time we'd chosen the ground and they were funneled mm. and we opened fire and it did not go well for them. And the ones that did meet our line, the Duke of Cumberland being a clever guy, thought, you know what, they have that little shield on their left hand side. So I'm going to train every single soldier in my army to do this particular bayonet drill. So the bayonets are fixed and they're not going to stab in front of them, like as instinct yeah. would demand. Right? Because mm. he's got his shield. Everyone's going to stab to the left of them. Ah. We're going to beat the shield, go under the sword arm, straight into the ribs, and he drilled his men to do it until it was... Makes sense. Enemy finding weakness. Yeah. Exploit it. Exactly. Stab him to the left of me. Yeah. <laughs> and the result was a fucking massacre, basically. <laughs> it took about three hours, and then the route, the ensuing route, when he unleashed the cavalry was ordered to give no quarter. They'd rebelled. Mm. They had no mercy. Mm. And they went through the highlands like a hot knife through butter, basically. 
Didn't surprise me. They raped and pillaged, brought Scotland under tighter control. Oh, the aren't we awesome? Yeah. The Highlanders were seen as an independent. Come out, ye black and tans. <laughs> no, I'm, only, I'm joking. Ian, the nickname the Butcher, the Duke of Cumberland. Not surprising. For this. Is that um, where Cumberland sausage comes from then, Butcher? That, no, well, no, the area of Cumberland is where the sausage comes from. Okay, I just thought it might have been a connotation. No. Well, you know, I suppose so, technically, the Butcher butchery, of Cumberland. Yeah, um, yeah. Mainly because he ordered no cut, and the cavalry just wiped out the fleeing Highlanders. Mm. And the result was that Scotland was brought under tighter control, they abolished the clans, so mm, moved yeah. the people into the cities where they wanted them to control them like. You'll like that one? No, uh, yeah. And and even to the point where they couldn't wear um they couldn't wear their tartan no. anymore. It was banned, mm. wasn't it? It was banned unless it was government tartan. It starts to make sense why every time I've been to Scotland there's been at least one person who's not been that pleased to meet me. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Same with the Irish. Mm. Mm. You know. So the government tartan was tartan who were issued to um like Scottish regiments in the army, so the Black Watch, the seventy first Highlanders, wore kilts. So you're allowed to wear that tartan because you're belonging to the government clan, mm. but you can't wear your own clan's tartan. Propaganda. Of course. Yeah, so today, because the majority of the Highlanders was buried in mass clan graves, which are marked by a single stone, witnesses report that on the anniversary of the battle, which is April 16th, the ghostly apparitions of fallen soldiers appear and the sounds of battle can be heard. Individuals encounter fallen soldiers as well as one soldier who runs the battlefield in a stunned state. And apparently, as, as we mentioned before, the birds don't sing because it's just too fucking creepy. Do they, though? Do they not? I well, mean... uh, when I went to that, when I went to Saxon House, and genuinely, the birds didn't sing. It was just eerily silent. All you could hear was the wind whistling across the open space. But is there like a geological explanation? Yeah, I don't think really? the birds can sense the no, evil. No, I say the birds can sense the evil, <laughs> but it just adds to the atmosphere. I don't know. I think animals are very emotive. They are at the time. I mean, what could be decades later? Evolution. Are they more sensitive to shit that we can't see? Them, Mike. Yeah. Well, yeah. Your cat gets freaked out before you do, doesn't he? Yeah. Well, it's birds. Uh, I trust the dog's instincts. I mean, if he goes, to, if he sort of. Gets alert all of a sudden. I, yeah, I I'll trust, go and look at the window. I, I trust my dog's instincts that postman is a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> he folded a 23 year old comic book in half once. What a cunt! Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Mike, what were you going to say? Mate? I was just going to say some birds can see the actual magnetic. Is that how they find yeah. their ways? That's how they think yeah. home in pigeons yeah. work, is yeah. magnetism. They can actually see that. Mm. Could we? Sorry, go. Or ahead. sense it, should I say? Yeah, we'll put a pin on it. can see it. Yeah. We've got a built in compass. Yep. Yeah, it is to do with the magnetism, isn't it? Yes, yeah. magnetism of the earth, yeah. Well, so there you go. But it's only one eye. If you cover a bird's eye, don't know which one it is. Who's putting eye patches on birds? That's what they've done. Scientists, yeah. mate, they're fucked <laughs> up. Oh, imagine that. Oh, I'll just qualify. I'll just go to university. Yeah, I'm going to go into fucking. I'm going to go into science. Hey, you. Put the eye patch on that pigeon. <laughs> oh, no, Do you have all 300 science. of these pigeons? How did they find Alternate out? Alternate eyes, fucker. How did they find out a duck's arsehole was shaped like a corkscrew? Was it through dissection or was it through testing? Well, both. You die. We used to have pigeons in the war. One got shot in the eye. Thought, hang on a minute, he can't find his way home now. <laughs> he never one, came to know, he never came back. But the other one, yeah, exactly. But the other one got shot in the other eye and he came back. Oh, right. So maybe... That's how they figured it out. Or maybe they just did put eye patches on birds and figure it out. <laughs> it's better than shooting them in the face, yes, I'll be honest. honest. If you can pick the eye out of a pigeon, <laughs> I'm, I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm genuinely impressed. Top marksman. I still need the pigeon. Shoot him in the eye. Damn, I've got the wrong eye. He'll be able to find his way home. <laughs> I'm going to piss on the soundboard in a minute. Battle of Little Bighorn, you know Custer, I Custer's do. Last Stand, you were just yeah. in that, you were using what, Westerns. Mm -hmm. June the 25th to the 26th, 1876, we're in the Wild West period, clearing their last out. You Basically, mean, you mean the US... genocide of the uh, native Indians? Yeah, yeah. that's the one. Um, where the US 7th Cavalry of 700 men goes up against 1,500 to 2,500 Native American warriors. 
And Custer is a egotistical cock, mm -hmm. basically, mm -hmm. and decides that he doesn't need his Gatling guns and the other 500 men he's got at his command. He's going to send them around the back, and he's going to make this attack because he thinks they're they're not soldiers. They we're soldiers. They're just savages. Yeah. And he gets his ass handed to him, basically. <laughs> Good. And the the, the the story of the the myth and, and romanticism about it, you know, the whole. They're all on a hilltop and Custer's mm. in the middle of the square. Mm. And he always had that distinctive... You, you know, the films are right. He did have that distinctive sort of buckskin yeah. jacket with the tassels on the arms and the right. cowboy hat. Yeah. That was him. Mm. Yeah, that, that, that's due to his wife. Because he was considered such a fucking disaster mm. for the US Army and the, and the US government, she basically put all her efforts into romanticising it. Right. But it's also worth, in, worth noting that she also lost a lot of her family that day. Because mm. it wasn't just Custer, it was also two of his brothers, a nephew and his brother-in-law, who were with him, and that was all because of patronage, the patronage system. Mm. Yeah. Come with me, say you've been with me in this campaign, and we won, it'll be glorious, and it'll, it'll bump you up the ladder. But yeah, so the last stand on the hill has been largely discounted due to battlefield archaeology. It's basically a desperate scramble for the summit, as they were kind of cut down from behind. And a few of them may have made it up there, but it certainly wasn't that nice all that you see in the paintings and the films mm. where they're all in ranks five, they run out of ammunition or overrun. Mm. No, it's just a bit of a mess, really. Mm. Good. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> US casualties, 286. Indians, about 31. Mm. You know, hauntings are widely reported. Witnesses say they feel overwhelmed by a feeling of hopelessness. There's been hallucinations. I have been bit Britain. to war. <laughs> I it's get that from money. Living in modern Britain. I just get that from breathing. Walking to the co-op. <laughs> from breathing. <laughs> You're breathing hopelessness in the air. Oh, I'm, I'm definitely, because I've been living where I'm living now almost two years, I'm definitely part of, you know, I'm, I'm, I've been accepted. Because on the parade in our part of Telford, the, you know, the Donington Parade. Oh, there's the rubber shops, basically. Yeah, you couldn't uh, get a parade, isn't it? Really it's, it's literally called the Donington Parade, though, and there's, like, there's a dude who, like, I can't for the life of me work out where I think he must live in one of the flats above the shops, but there's a big tattooed dude with a guy. He looks like a gypsy, like, who would come and do your drive, but no, he, he just stands there on the street in front of the chippy, just stands there drinking beer. Sometimes he has... One fucked up dude with him who looks homeless. Sometimes he has several people with him, men and women. And all I could work out is like, I think <coughs> he's the local dealer. I think mm. he's just that brazen. He stood out there because he, he does a shift, man. He's out there eight hours a day. No with, way. With his beer on the just <laughs> stood on the street. Several beers or just one. Oh beer? yes, and, and, and you know, and, and I've seen him giving money to people and sending them into the shops. Like, yeah, go and get yourself a beer. Yeah, yeah, you know, and all this. And so all I can work out, he must live in one of the flats above the shops. He must do. Yeah. So, you know, and he must be dealing. He must be. But anyway, I walked past him the other day and he went, all right, mate. All right, mate. I was like, That's it. I've only walked past him like 300 times. <laughs> <laughs> now I've fine. I've been accepted. So I'll let you know next week if he offers me a bag of heroin. <laughs> I'll bring it here and share the wealth. Hey. <laughs> I don't want to do heroin. <laughs> It'd be a fun episode. It would be. But actually, we're not going to listen to it because it'd be silent. <laughs> yeah. He's going to lay on the floor gurning. <laughs> Occasionally, one of us starts to choke her own vomit. <laughs> <laughs> it means, you know what that means? I'm going to be the. Oh, no, I'm the only one who knows it. Does anyone know the recovery business apart from me? I know the recovery yes, business. Yes, yes. You're not the only one who's done first aid. I've done it too. I know the recovery position. I technically know how to do the. Resuscitation. I wouldn't be confident to do it. I've done it on the doll, Resusciani. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, do you know what that... it is a macabre fact? Oh, do you know where the face from for Resusciani? Oh, no. Body of a woman drowned in 19th century Paris. Oh, that? is that? And her face is famous. It's. I've heard a documentary about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her face is used on all sorts of um, yeah. models. She's and unidentified. Like, but she was beautiful about it. And they made a mould of, of a face, and then that face has been used on like statues, or you know the sorts mm. of things that are on buildings, like yeah. up in the you know it'll be her face just randomly. Yeah. If you need a face, that was the kind of a go-to face yeah. back then. 
Yeah, and they and used the, it on her. The Sussy oh, Annie's face, the bit. resuscitation doll is that face, so you're giving CPR to a droned French 19th century woman. identified woman. A very attractive one, apparently. And I did yeah. learn, I do remember the one thing that sticks with me, because I can remember the tracing with your two fingers down to here, to where, yeah. you, where you press... Yeah. That you, if you're going to do it right, you're going to crack some ribs. You're going to break some ribs. Yeah, you're going to Have you ever seen it done? No, not in real. I've seen it done on the doll. I've not seen it done. I've seen the footage of it being done. Oh, and no, if I you want to, uh, you're doing it properly, the rib cage mm. just bows out. If yeah. you don't break ribs, you're not mm. doing it right. Well, I suppose, yeah, because you can't like actually press your heart by pressing no. on your chest. So you've got to you? really... Yeah. Down. Whoa, fuck you got to do it to stay alive, haven't you? No, no, that's too slow now. Oh, it's yeah. too slow. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. I was told. No, because that was um, that was thirty to the minute. Right. It's uh, it's sixty now. It's one a second. It's um, Stormzy. She's awake. <laughs> but just should stop the fucking music. That's why I woke up. <laughs> basically, uh, CPR alone probably won't bring you round. You need a defib. Is that the electrics? Yeah, thing? and they're yeah. all pretty simple nowadays. Anyone can use that. You, 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 all you do is take open the kit. Charge. It tells you how to put the pads. Yeah. Use your little razor because if if you're too hairy on the chest, it'll just burn you. So you have to shave while you're putting Look the pads that. on. And then oh, it's a fucking crack. No, <laughs> <laughs> Mike, once you've done the chest, you can do what you want, mate. <laughs> and in between, in between blasts, you have to look up at the sky and go, "Come on!" Yeah, turn the instructions. <laughs> <laughs> Tearfully. And if you, if and you, as you had to put it down, you have to press it to shout, "Clear!" <laughs> yeah. You do actually, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Clear. Clear. But it speaks to you, the new kids. They speak to you. They say, oh, okay, put the You are in. fucking this yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> Who changed you? Admit, it's charging. Admit the shock. Press the red button. And you press the red button. Uh. Gives him the shock. And it says, okay, analysing heartbeat. Mm. And then it analyses. You go, another shock required. Press the red button. And you press it. Well, and you, you know, the in movies, they like to use that trope quite a lot, don't they? You know, the most heartbreaking defibrillator scene committed to cinema history in my opinion comes from Short Circuit 2 oh, God, at yeah. the end he's bleeding <laughs> yeah. and, it, and he find it the white guy who's playing an Indian guy in brown face yeah. in 1990 something 1989 yeah. or something like that very, is two. he a late 80s late 80s but still he's mm. a fucking white guy in brown face doing big accent and he literally says to the <laughs> the ambulance guy give it to me I will beat living headlights out of you <laughs> gives him the defibrillator <laughs> fucking Johnny oh god and he comes back anyway he does showed that to the kids in the last couple of he weeks like no book, he? yeah they haven't seen part one so I basically just filled them in really quickly. I was like, yeah, he's a robot, got struck by lightning, comes to life, now he moves to the city, boom. That's all they need to know. They fucking loved that movie. Yeah. And I felt so vindicated. Because that might be seen as a bit of a trash movie, but that was one of my go-to movies. Yeah. It was one of the VHSs I had. It still fucks me up. When they beat the shit out of him, mate. Yeah. That is fucking serious tear-jerking. And they break his out. eye. They smack his eyes hanging out. They just smash it. He's on the floor, bleed. They just keep, and it's in slow motion. He's going, no! And like, yeah. You're fucking eight. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's 25. Yeah. What's offensive about him? They're hitting him with pickaxe handles. They're murdering him on the street. <laughs> but, like you said, he does then go into a little, and he's so fucked up, he has to write on the wall, fix me. Yeah. You know, and the guy who's been the salesman, the rapscallion through the whole film, who just he tried to sell Johnny Five. Yeah. He just wants to make. He, he's the one who's got fucking help him. I'm not. I'm not an electrician. And he makes the mohawk. Yeah. And then he hits the street. He's and, and, he, and then it starts playing. <laughs> doom doom do 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 do. I need a hero. Yeah. <laughs> right. Mm. Bonnie Tyler's fucking playing. And he says, Oscar, I'm really pissed off. And you're like, yeah. <laughs> Fuck, I love that film! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just needed to get that off my chest. <laughs> Evidently. I'm going to go back to mutilated bodies after this. Short circuit too, man. <laughs> Fuck, that movie is life affirming. It's all gold at the end, they make him a citizen and he jumps. Anyway, back to the dead war, people. Custer's last stand. Johnny Five's last stand. 
<laughs> Where's the ghost? Let's get to the ghosts. We get there was a big war and it all fucking went wrong. Where's the ghosts? <laughs> I was having the feeling of hopelessness. That's it. Just the feeling of hopelessness. And there was pictures of the battle, and a groundskeeper who lived on site was uh, claimed her house was haunted by a cavalry soldier. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> Bit still in the case bang, closed. Yeah. Case closed. <laughs> it's, hey, I'm not presenting this as I believe in it. <laughs> We know our we know our topics. We well, know we we know we don't hey, believe in ghosts. Me and Mike know full well why we're talking about this. It's so we can do some military history. <laughs> do a Dan Carlin <laughs> thing, man. Fuck it. All right, next one then. A stabbing grad. Okay, I know a bit about this. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not stabbing you. Keep going. Population had to eat rats. <laughs> yeah, that was late. Again, oh, remember, both, yeah, remember, remember who you're talking to. It's me, so you got to give me. Context when was Stalingrad? What Second World War? Right, oh, boom! I'm, I know that. You said the, the film Enemy of the Gates. No, but I know of it. Awesome yeah. film. Right? Yeah, good film actually. Um, Stalingrad. Battle My Stalingrad. Dad loves that film yeah. actually. No okay, cables in that. <laughs> no, <laughs> he likes a war film. Twenty uh, third of August, nineteen forty two, to the second of February, nineteen forty three. German casualties are four hundred thousand. There's some Italian casualties, one hundred and fourteen thousand. Romanian casualties up to one hundred and fifty eight thousand. Hungarian casualties up to 143,000. Those are the bad guys in this scenario. They're the Axis powers. Right. Wasn't just Germany. They had some mates. Soviet Union, 1,129,619,000 casualties. Fuck. Now, and is a I've always been confused missing. about this, the word casualty. Because as a driver, you'll go on certain roads and there'll be a big sign that says, uh, 179 casualties in three years. What is a casualty? Is it? It's not a death, is it necessarily? It's dead, wounded, or dead or wounded. Dead or, or wounded. Yeah. yeah, dead or wounded. Fatality is death, I think. Yeah. So casualty is still a sit. So it's enough to be counted as like it wasn't a fucking. He didn't need two stitches and a plaster. He was like. Yeah, it can be anything from that to death. Oh. Yeah. I can take you can either killed or wounded. Four hundred seventy-eight thousand seven hundred one killed or missing. 650,878 wounded. Again, with with just, like... I'm missing is Not with the mother of all bombs, like, this is like... Yes, there was big bombs and big shells, wasn't there, and all that, but this is still pretty... No, Stalin got his house-to-house, street-to-street, room-to-room. There's a city... How long did this take to kill um, that many people? 23rd of August to the 2nd of February. Oh... So less than nine, well, nine months, isn't it, roughly? Well, August to February. August to February. No, it's about six months. Six months. They're horrible. And this is house to house, yeah. hand to hand, all close quarters. Because remember, this city is called Stalingrad, Stalin City. Yeah. No, fucking hell, yeah. So I've never, literally Hitler never made that Stalin connection. And he's like, well, What's it called now? Is it it's called uh, Volgograd. Right, okay. Volgograd. Yeah, I'm glad this. Wait, wait, is it in relation to Moscow? It's in, it's in the southern, it's in southern Russia on the Volga River. It's down towards the Crimean Peninsula. Okay, so that's where all the oil fields were, wasn't it? Exactly. Yeah, so Hitler, they need the Germans. He was thirty the miles from Moscow, wasn't he? Yeah, at one point, yeah, nineteen forty. We're on. Yeah. Yeah. and they went south because they wanted the oil fields. Well, if they, they got, got to turn... Moscow. They may have won the war. They would have, but. At the same time that the Brits had cracked the cipher, saying the Jap- Japanese weren't going to attack Russia from the back, mm-hmm. and the Russians shipped across about like two hundred thousand Siberian troops who are like winter equipped and hard as fuck. What was Japan's motivation in World War Two? The same as like Hitler's and everybody Resources else's for more Japan, take over more territory. Building. Was it literally in the zeitgeist, I guess, back then, that, like, you know, if you want to take that country next to you and make it yours, you just can. Well, it was a massive war in China, wasn't it? Manchuria? Yeah, China 37, was, was it? Yeah, it started a bit, actually started earlier than that. I think it was started about 35. Yeah, so but do you lot, get what I'm saying, though? Like, so there's already a war there, anyway. So the Chinese they, went, well, hang on, we haven't got many resources, and we want to we want to be with the big boys, we want to be with the Brits, the Germans, the Russians, mm. the Americans, we want to be up there. But well, we need the resources. Japan's got very little resources. Mm. So China's got a shit ton though. But hey, all the big boys, they've got empires. They get their resources from there. We haven't got that. We're going to invade China, Manchuria, get their resources, and then we're going to expand and get more. Because that's what the West's done. Mm-hmm. So and that's Japan... how we become a number one player. 
Man, Capitalism, I, I, mate. I need educating on this big time. So, like, Japan, the little tiny island of Japan, <laughs> not unlike the little tiny island of Britain, yeah. went into the giant country of China yeah. and yeah. just started taking... Because the Chinese are fighting each other, mm. the Japanese went in as a united front, and it was eventually them versus... The, China, as we know, it wasn't China then, was it? No, it was a various states. It wasn't until, you know, Chairman Mao, Mm. Mao Zedong. Mm. He was the dude that managed to unify the communists to fight the the Japanese. The Japanese and see them off. And see them off. With America and British and and Russian help. Yeah, to rise. But you see what I'm saying? Like, this idea, this is only 50, 60 years ago, but, like, it must have been back then. I suppose we still do it, Afghan and all that, but, like, this idea of just like if you don't like what your neighbour over the border's doing, you just go and take it. Yeah. Just go and have it. And it's it was only like when, but it worked for me. us. No, but what I mean is like it, it, back then it seemed a bit acceptable, but then we didn't like the way Hitler did it. Do you know what I mean? Like we did it. Oh, that's our what's way. happening on our doorstep. Yeah. It's not happening yeah, half it's the world. It's to away. actually try and affect us. Then oh, he might. What you've been doing to everyone else, he might come and do it to you. Oh well, we better take up arms against this then. And, uh, and it was our colonies versus their colonies as well mm, in yeah. Africa and that. It's yeah. just amazing. I need to know more about Japan because it well, fascinates me. The Japanese Japan. threatened India at one point. They've Holy gone across shit. the Far East that much. They've gone to Burma. That's literally on the doorstep to India, which was the crown of the British Empire. It's mad, isn't it? How something so like the UK did it. We we were a little piss yeah. out fucking island. So was Japan. I'd love to know which it's is bigger. Resources, Japan's mate. Bigger oh, Japan, no, no, we're bigger than Japan, I think. Are we bigger physically? More people, I think. Right, but like Certainly so, yeah, like you say, so it's down to know. economics, resources, yeah. the the good, the equipment you've got. The, yeah. But sheer numbers of people. How do you have enough people from Japan to have the balls to walk over to China? And go, hello. Because I remember the Chinese weren't professionally trained, the Japanese right. were a professional army. When the Japanese modernise, you know, The Last Samurai, the film The Last Samurai, mm. that's at the perfect point where the late 1890s where the Japanese go, right, you know what, we want to be a world player. So they mm. got in the Americans, they got in the Germans, all right, train our army for us. Mm. They got the British, all right, tell us how to build a navy, tell us how to train a navy. Mm. And they got in advisors. And they modernised in the space of like 30 to 50 years. They went from a feudal society with the samurai to a western industrialised society in over 50 years. So is the last samurai potentially true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the, the, some certainly. dudes not, went the, over No, 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 no <laughs> not that bit. Not, not anything in the film, but the, certainly the period of going between mm. this feudal society, almost a medieval society, mm. Samurai, uh, to, to technological prowess. They had like paper buildings for God's yeah, sake still. To, to <laughs> building skyscrapers. And as good as the samurai were, there were no match for machine guns. Well, no, well that's it. Is. It is, isn't it? Yeah. So, literally, they had no choice. It was either modernise or die. That was it. This is our new way of life. We're gonna be, we need to progress as a nation. We need to be up there with the big boys. This is what we do. Sorry, your way of life is now extinct. You either join us or you die. Sorry, I've just fired. <laughs> the listener didn't need to know, but I needed to warn the two men I'm locked in a room with. Mm. Sorry, listener. So, Any... where's the ghosts? The ghosts? Are they samurai ghosts? No, because this is Stalingrad. Oh, fuck. It's... Why are we talking about samurais? <laughs> I love this <laughs> podcast. Uh, uh... Oh, man, I've got loads with the battle as well. Oh, well. Yeah, ghosts. Ghosts. Come on, we're only on number four. It's fucking quarter past nine. So? <laughs> I've got war ghosts. So? How much more war is there? Ghosts, right. The ghosts of the Stalingrad. Let's well, basically, you think we have seen dead soldiers about... Is that it? <laughs> yeah, but I'll tell you why. So, yeah. Is there a bit of an eerie feeling at the battlefield? No, I'll tell you why. Because as soon as... In Russia, they're still rebuilding the city. It was utterly fucking devastated. Right. So, basically, they're still finding the bodies now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, the, in February, on the car, on a construction site, this is a quote from uh, Russian officials in the city, on the uh, National Street, we found 60 bodies of German soldiers. Sometimes bodies also found by chance during construction work. Volgograd residents have long become used to finding dead soldiers on water pipes are being replaced oh. in the streets. Again, it's that, it's, that, it's that emotion of the moment, isn't it? These people are saying, well, these, these guys are still trying to around where they've died. Essentially, each, each case is going to come down to whether or not you believe in ghosts, yeah, course, afterlife, yeah. or whatever. And unfortunately, sorry, mate, I need to piss again. Mm-hmm. I've only got one more, it's okay, so we'll go piss All with right, him. Then. 
Any ghosts in this one, Ben? Yeah. Oh, all right, all right, all right that's good. You know, the Wars of the Roses? Yeah. The movie starring the little guy, Danny DeVito. No. Okay. No. Moving on. And um, basically, Game of Thrones is based. You haven't seen Game of Thrones either, have you? No, but I'm aware of what the gist yeah. is. Basically, it was based on the Wars of the Roses. It's an English Civil War. This yeah. battle was a decisive battle, the 29th of March, 1461. Oh, fuck yeah. it up. Wasn't it basically Lancaster versus Yorkshire? Yeah, pretty much. That was it, yeah. And that's where there's rivalry today. It goes back to well, that. Was there really? I didn't even know about yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, Lan- Lancashire and Yorkshire. Hey, you must know when Leeds and Man United play each other. Oh, when you put it. I oh, never think of yeah. what the counties are called. Yeah, obviously. Of course. Of course. I uh, thought just put, oh, just coming back from that. This uh, yes, yeah. exactly. Right. Yes. Strange in it how it sort of like evolved over time. Now it's like a football no, it's rivalry. Like football, but yeah. it fills the same role, doesn't it? Exactly. Tribalism. It's tribalism. Politics has taken over that now. And the prize is the throne of England. They're both um, you, Plantagenets. You ever heard the name Plantagenets? Yeah. The ancient kings of England. I haven't. No. Yeah. That line went up to Henry Tudor, and a bit later, in the late fourteen hundreds, first Henry. They had quite a big empire. Plantagenets. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we have parts of France and everything. in France. Yeah. Right, right. 100 years wars, and then uh, after that is, well, 100 years war. 100 mm. years of war against France. Well, I think it was like Again, I only know about that because I've read the war. And then, and then basically had idiot sons that fought over it and, and, and just... And lost them. Yeah, lost it all, yeah. Lost it all. It went down to like... Uh, the feudal system, you know, barons who control everything for you, and they thought, you know what, mm. I should just own this bit. Mm. Never mind paying my taxes to you. I should, you're in England. I should yeah. just own this bit. Make yeah. my own personal kingdom. Mm. And it all went downhill from there. Wow. So it was York versus Lancaster. York have got 25 to 30,000 soldiers. They suffered 8,000 killed. Shit. Lancaster, they had 30 to 35,000 soldiers, and they suffered 20,000 casualties, 20,000 dead. And this is being done with longbows and swords and axes oh, and bludgeons yeah. and anything else you can use as a hand-to-hand weapon. My favourite fact, because I don't know much history about longbowmen, quite so much, there's a certain number, they know the number, but X amount of pounds of pressure to actually pull the longbow back. I read somewhere... That they had deformed, if you dig yeah. up their skeletons, yeah. their right shoulder or whichever arm they were, mm-hmm. Is slightly deformed oh, wow. because of a lifetime of just fucking yeah. firing arrows, wow. practicing firing. There's an interesting uh, fact with that is it was law for the common man to be able to use a longbow. That's all. You had to go down every Sunday mm. and practice with the butts mm. and fire arrows all day Sunday. I like but. You know, was, they call people butt in South Wales. I don't yeah. know why. But of the joke? Probably nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but of the sheep. Did you hear that, Dad? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was your. It was required by but law. But of the sheep. <laughs> it was. It was law. As, so we would yeah. every Sunday because we're common working men yeah. would have to go down with Speak our bow. Speak yourself, dear. Jeff. After church, I imagine. After church and practice all day. When do we go and watch the wrestling? You don't. Ow. Oh. Mm-hmm. It's your day off, but you're going to practice. If you don't, you're, you're in the stocks. And that's what. But the longbow, and going back to Naked the Naked throwing rotten fruit at you. Unless I was the court jester. It could be that. Was the court jester exempt from such activities? I imagine activities? so. I imagine I'd so. Imagine so, yeah. I'd, I'd have yeah. done that. You're before. not a commoner then, are you? You're, a, you're in the court. Oh, you're court. part of the court. But, yeah. as you're as the lowest rung on the ladder, being, though. As long as you're being funny, mm. you're exempt from it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> as soon as you tell a joke that don't go down so well, off with his hands. <laughs> Why not my head? It's crueler. <laughs> <laughs> And this is actually the largest and bloodiest battle fought, and then we saw the Battle of Toyton, not Toyton. Toyton, I've been to Toyton, I think. Yeah, Toyton, it's spelled T O W T O N. Toyton, I imagine. Toyton, yeah. Largest and bloodiest battle fought, and we saw. Fought entirely in a snowstorm. Fuck. And the oh, York. I imagine how it looked. <laughs> Visually, do you know what I mean? The blood on the, the snow. Yeah. If it was. Well, it, there was apparently. Well, fuck all. Like Game of Thrones. Looked like fuck, a Jackson yeah, Pollock. Fuck all visibility. But the Yorks, the Yorkists get the advantage because their archers are firing down wind. Huh. Well, so you've got the longbow, which, really? as you said earlier, massive. Mm. I read somewhere it's the equivalent of lifting a fifteen-stone man in one hand. 
Well, there Someone you go. Well, that's a lifetime of it. And you do that for a lifetime. Mm. You do that from when you can. And, and the longbow was six feet high. Oh. And if and I like to think of it as like taller than men, taller than some of the men who fired it. But you know the most. Back then. You know the yeah. most recent Rambo film where he gets hold of the the mounted gun on the back of the yeah. truck. Yeah. Starts fighting. Fifty you know cal. What fifty caliber? There you go. And it literally makes people explode. That back then in that sort of ancient warfare was this the, like the the equivalent of like the the normal yeah. bow and arrow that was your sort of I don't know the long bow was the the, the king that was the heavy yeah. cab. if one of them hit you your head was going to explode or like your top your torso was going to well, rip in they two. had different arrows for different things they're quite mm. clever mm. I think it was something like fifteen to twenty uh, twenty arrows a minute. Mm. And when you've got the majority of your army made up of these guys, because you just go and round up the common people and say, "Hey, you can, you're all really good archers," because you pass this law. Go and fight for the king. Come and fight for the king. Yeah. So the majority of your army is archers, and they've all expert shots at three hundred meters mm. with an arrow, with, and they had different arrows. So they had a, a pointy arrow, mm. a bodkin head, it was called, like a needle tip almost, right. that would go through plate armor. Okay. So you got your knights. You know that mm. fancy armor. Yeah, yeah. Don't stand a chance. Yeah, fucked. And then you got your barbed arrows, which are a pointy head with the two barbs coming off at the end, mm. either end. That will take down your horse. Mm. So if you're on your horse and your, your armor survives, then you're in the mud anyway because your horse is down. Have you seen the Brussels Crow Robin Hood video? Oh. Yeah, it's terrible. Oh, yeah, it's bad. His accent kept jumping in yeah, it really annoyed great. me. But I did like the scenes of the where you see that many arrows coming down at once. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Getting an idea of what it'd be like to be on the receiving end where there's literally just thousands of knives yeah. raining from the sky. Yeah. <laughs> Propelled with force and going downwind. Yeah. So they arrange the other side. And if you and if your men can fire how many a second, you know, literally Yeah, whoosh, fifteen whoosh, to twenty whoosh, a minute. Whoosh. It's just never-ending waves of raining yeah, And you've got death. massed ranks doing that. So first yeah. rank fires, second rank yeah. fires, third rank, all the way, however far you want to go back. Organised and trained. That's yeah. just raining death upon people, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, like, absolutely. Wow. Yeah, so in ten hours, within ten hours, the Lancastrian forces were in a row. They dropped their helmets and armour to escape faster, but sadly they, were, they just made them more vulnerable and they were cut down or drowned in a nearby stream. Now it's reported that every seven years, the town of Toton will experience a similar heavy snowstorm, and if one should walk out in the storm to the site of the battle, they will see the two armies fighting. Well, without being a dick, we can check this factually, can't we? How many times... Uh, we can check the geological record of how yeah. often it snows in Toton, can't we? And if it hasn't snowed every year, it's bollocks. And I, <laughs> the fa it doesn't snow every year, guaranteed. Every seven years? It, ah, f Listen, you're the fact checker. Have a look. How, how often has it snowed in Torton? It's the legend, guys. I know, and it's slight yeah, tangent, one more, but one more. And it's just, it's we need, we, we need a fucking worthwhile Robin Hood movie. Robin Hood is our version of Batman. Yeah, he is the British superhero. But every time they try and, and do it, a communist. There you go. You, you can't <laughs> That's argue. True, actually, yeah. Rob from the rich, feed to the poor. They did the one recently. It must have flopped big time. I've never heard nothing about yeah, it. Yeah, and it came straight to VOD, and yeah. I haven't watched it yet with Jamie Fox mm. and that. Have you watched it? No, I haven't. I haven't Jamie Fox must and have the guy from Kingsman. Yeah, it must have sucked so because that got buried. I've didn't never it? heard of it. Exactly, it was it, like they've obviously put hundreds of millions into to make it, but like we mentioned with that film earlier, they've looked at it and gone, nah. Uh, we're going to lose more. Because you know you can't just put a movie in the cinema. It doesn't work. To, to have a movie in the cinema, you have to pay the cinema chain yeah. per screen, per screening. Like So you work out your deal. How many cinemas are going to have the movie? How many screens? How many screenings? And all that costs money, obviously. So then if you've looked at that and gone, we don't believe in this film and yeah. it's going to cost more to do that, fuck it, it'll go straight to Netflix. Yeah. That tells you. Yeah. But then, I don't know, maybe it was just wrong timing. The thing is, he, he had Let's like, the magazine loaded crossbows. And oh, they've gone steampunk with it. He just jumped through the it. air and fired. Have they gone, so, what's that, Assassin's Creed yeah, style? That kind of, yeah, that kind no, of thing. No, you don't need it. Robin Hood's a badass anyway. He needs, someone needs to treat it like Batman, treat it that seriously. Yeah. This fucking dude who went to the Crusades, got fucking dissolute. He's a, the most trained soldier you can be at that time. Absolute SAS style, 
best of the best, goes away, comes back to Britain, dis a fucking illusion. He's got this band of other disillusioned soldiers. You mean soldiers. Like fucking Rambo? They're like Vietnam vets. Yeah. They're disillusioned as fuck. They come back to England. This cunt's trying to do all this shit in Nottingham while the king's away on the Crusades. You're still loyal yeah. to him. They're locking up peasants. They're just taking people's wealth, taxation, blah, blah, blah. And you decide, do you know what? We're the most trained men there is. We're going to go on an absolute terrorist rampage. Which is essentially kind of what it is, isn't first it? Rambo. They are terrorists, they would be... Yeah. Mm. Maybe and, you know the but first treat Rambo. it that fucking okay. seriously. Maybe he's a th- broken ex... He's psychologically taught... He has seen things you can't imagine. Yeah, he's come back to England to escape back to the things he remembered, the things that kept him going through the nightmares. Yeah. Britain, the forest, the tradition. And he comes back and it's a fascist nightmare. What's he going to do? He's traumatised. You weren't there, man! Exactly. He's fucking going to go... It's a cross of V for Vendetta he's and gonna, Rambo. He's going to have a necklace of posh people's ears, you cunt. I love it. Somebody do Robin Hood properly, please. You know what? Fuck it. We'll write it. What's it's... Kevin Cost up to now? <laughs> <laughs> get him, man. Fuck it, get him in. I'm in for it. I'm up for it. Get him in. His mullet should not wave in the wind. <laughs> His hair sprayed. <laughs> Coiffed mullet. I'm, I'm up for Kevin Costa doing it. Or, you know what? Fuck it. Michael Keaton. Older Robin Hood. Mm, nah, a bit like. Nah, who's Tom in... Hardy. Tom Hardy would be a good one. Yeah. That'd yeah. be fucking good, yeah. And I see Killian Murphy in some kind of role as well that's actually decent. Show for Nottingham. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But imagine that, so he, so think about it, comes back traumatised from the war, sees this shit going on in what used to be, you know, his, his, his dad's land's been taken while his dad's off fighting, whatever. His dad's dead. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. so the land's been, he comes back, man, and it just snaps him. Yeah. And they go sick on these cunts. And the sheriff of Nottingham and his little fat mates who've been scouts. living it up, they don't they can't compete. No. They're literally getting like you said, men are coming out of the shadows to slit their throats yeah. and like this is it. They're absolute war. Black hoods and fucking cut the shadows, yeah. cut the throat down, Whoa. leave the body. It there. could be so badass. Yeah. He is our Batman and someone needs to treat it that way, so that's my plea. I think we need to write it. Nothing stopping us. No. Let's do it. Alright, it's copyright us. Yeah. <laughs> Tom Hardy, if you're listening. Yeah, man, <laughs> do it. Or I'd go for Carl Urban. Oh, yeah. Okay. He did Dread, yeah, man. Yeah, he's pretty cool. Dread and Bones. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Well, oh, well, actually, you know what? Chef in Ireland, I'm going to put it out there. Is it Mark Strong, the Scottish guy? Oh, that yeah, bored yeah. guy. He's a really good bad guy and yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah, I was hey, going to have you seen line. Aquaman, the movie? I haven't, actually. I haven't. I watched it the other night, and I was proper like, uh, you know, fuck it. What a load of wank. That's the best DC movie I have seen. Better than Watchmen? Money. Technically DC? Okay. Uh, do you know what? i maybe not say better, but I'll say more enjoyable, more like more of a popcorn. Ah, so, it's, it's, so it's... it's, it's, a, it's it's a Marvel DC movie, basically. It's the closest yeah. they fucking come. Yeah. The visuals are mint. They've literally not, they're, they're, amazing. On, let's stop making really dark movies and make something everyone can enjoy. That's fun and yeah. exciting and just like fantastical and yeah. 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 Modern really well DC, you finally caught up. Give <laughs> no, that's what I, I, I like the dark. The Me too. I, I love the I love Watch the dark Man DC, but the problem is for them it doesn't I go actually, into the wholesale market. I really yeah. recommend Aquaman. Honestly, right, give it okay. a go. Put that on your movie list. Right, I will. Uh, yeah. So that Actually, Mike, I, I, I was watching Avengers Endgame and I, I was like, Mike, Mike needs to watch these films. The last, certainly the last mm. three. I think if I went from Thor, Thor Ragnarok, and then jumped mm. straight into Infinity War and Endgame, I think you'd know enough to get through it. I think so. Mm. I think you could appreciate them. But while we're yeah. at this uh, natural point, I'm going to have to piss again. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. <laughs> Uh, one more, and then we're, we're done with the major history, all right? No yeah. problem. Uh, the last one I've got is Antium, which at one point, the Battle of Antium, what, Civil War, American Civil War again, mm-hmm. was the bloodiest one up to Gettysburg. Oh. There was 23,000 casualties in this wow. in a day, a couple of days. Shit. The bloodiest battle of the Civil War at this point took place on September 17th, 1862, at the Antium Creek. In the small town of Sharpsburg, Maryland. This is the South invading the North again, and this is their first attempt. Mm. Four hours, so this is four hours, Fuck. 
An intense fighting took place on an old sunken road that separated two farms. This is part of the battlefield. For four hours this happened. The staggering 23,100 men were wounded, killed or missing in action after the Union Confederate armies collided in the nearby cornfields, farmlands and the creek. When the Confederate army reached the sunken road, which provided some protection at first, General Robert E. Lee ordered that the battle be held there. Soldiers on both sides fired continuously as the Federal troops tried repeatedly to overtake the position. Finally, the Confederate soldiers were overrun and bodies fell on top of bodies in the blooded sunken road. Yeah. Today we know it as Bloody Lane, and if you ever have the occasion to walk it, you will indeed go back in time and be humbled by the experience. The tragic impressions of that day seem to linger. It seems that no matter how many visitors roam the old road on any given day, it remains church-like quiet. According to eyewitnesses, Bloody Lane is haunted. Gum farm, the smell of gunpowder, have been reported when no one is on the road or even nearby. And gunpowder smells is a sulphur smell. Could that be being emitted from the as you walk? Like, yeah, because that know. much of it. Sulphur yeah. comes from the, from inside the air. Yeah, but imagine. Yeah. All right, okay. Could it, be, it could have vented out of a. But it could it be that much shit underneath the soil from the battle? That it only the takes the bones underneath him, like ammunition, the pouches, That's what I mean, it only so takes somebody to walk cartridges. over and, and, yeah, could be. and could be. you know, overturn a bit of dirt yeah. and it release. Yeah, I don't know, I'm just trying to... One visitor to the battlefield saw several men in Confederate uniforms walking Bloody Lane. He thought they were being actors until they vanished. The most convincing of the reports is the one of some Baltimore schoolboys who walked Bloody Lane and heard singing out in the fields. They said it sounded like a chant or the Christmas song, Deck the Halls. They heard a similar chant to fa la 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 sounded repeatedly. The area was near the observation tower where the Irish Brigade stormed the Confederates the battle cry in Gaelic, which sounded like the Christmas carol. And that, I've heard that before. It was entirely in the north, where the, like, the Irish people settled, they spoke Gaelic entirely. They barely spoke mm. English. Irish regiments were recruited. They screamed in Gaelic as they advanced. They all spoke Gaelic to one another. English wasn't their first language. No, I'm not putting this as a spiritual thing, mm. or good, but it's interesting that melting pot of America at the time, yeah. where these, you know, you've got every single European sort of country, people are emigrating there, and they've all been caught up. And this, I mean, these guys, they're living in the north, they're speaking Gaelic, they're living in their Irish communities. Next thing you know, they're charging a lot of muskets and bayonets and cannons, screaming in their own language, which isn't the language that the Union's talking. It's, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Was, I'm not saying that the whole fucking war was steady changed. wage and three meals a day. Well, in the Northern Army, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's why they joined up, wasn't it? They couldn't get work. Or work that paid well. Toy soldiers. Oh, out in the Fields by Phil Lynott. Phil oh, Lynott and Gary uh, Moore. Out thinking. in the Fields. Or uh, the classic from Status Quo. Oh, oh, we're in the army now. Oh, fuck quo. <laughs> you, not even that song. You can't even they, get they, behind that one. No, they're in the reggae box. Status quo. We're in the reggae box. No, not me. They are. They fucking. I not. put them personally. Put them in the. They are box. not. <laughs> down, <laughs> down, deeper and down. Do 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 do. Down, down, no. deeper and down. Do no. do do. do reggae down. box. Oh come on, boogie woogie man. <laughs> nope, reggae box. Yeah. Done. The boogie woogie box. Yeah. Anyway, back to the fa <laughs> la 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 uh, Another haunted day is Burnside's Bridge, known as uh, Rawback Bridge, which General Ambrose Burnside pushed the Confederates back into many defeated attempts. And this was uh, another massacre, really. There was a narrow bridge. You give it four men across, and the Confederates had sharpshooters in the in the cover, and they just Where's shot them down. the fucking I've ghosts. told you the ghosts. They're coming. They're coming. <laughs> They're coming! Hang on! <laughs> the state of fucking civil war now. <laughs> <laughs> Many soldiers are buried quickly in and around the bridge in unmarked graves. Visitors at night have reported seeing balls of blue light moving around the sound of drums playing as it fades in the night. Perhaps the battle of Antium is not over for some restless spirits. Boom. Oh dear, what was that tune? Um, From Dr. Strange, where you said that you'd, you'd immediately yeah, yeah, grab a musket and go and yeah, fight if you heard that. That's what was playing! Yeah, fuck. I don't know, look. 
Well, we'll call it there. So, were there ghosts? Hey, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was ghosts there. I'll give you some ghost tales. I went side. Do you have a give us ghost tales? <laughs> you give us detailed descriptions of war, and then at the end said, yeah, some people said there was some ghosts afterwards. <laughs> so, I'm not trying to convince you. I don't believe in this. I don't well, believe I mean, in ghosts. But, I'm not saying, right. but this is therapy for me. I've enjoyed researching good. military history this week. I'm glad. Now, we've enjoyed listening to it, but I, I just... But seriously, we need to try and tie it into the subject title. What's your opinions? Where are we? I honestly do think that in certain really emotively charged occasions, such as war, where you've got literally every single emotion that humans can experience in one massive moment... Who's having a wank and an orgasm in a war? Someone is, like, <laughs> Someone is... You know, out of all the thousands of men, one dude's got a heart. Someone has fired a machine gun whilst masturbating. Yeah. Definitely. Exactly. Right? Ted Cruz could bake it on his. If I, I watched that the other day. He's <laughs> a Zodiac killer, right? so he was getting a hard Did off of murdering people. Like, yeah, I've seen it. <laughs> I thought it was pretty, like, to be honest, I, I was... Pretty thinking, badass. It's pretty well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty badass. I just think I'd have liked it better. It looked kind of yeah. raw to me. It's a little bit like raw with some black bits. Yeah. <laughs> if I'd have had like an M60, which is firing 600 rounds a minute, and I loose off a couple of hundred rounds rather than 30, mm. that bacon's going to be done to my liking. Well, what I was thinking when I saw it was like... It, is this come from like war zones where people are like, well, I ain't got time to grill and I gotta eat? You know I, what I mean? I doubt it, but. It's just a gimmick, innit? Yeah. I mean, I dare say someone's tried it. You must have got the idea from somewhere. I refuse to believe Ted Cruz is that original. Mm. Unless, mm. of course, it's sending ciphers to the FBI that are undecipherable to this day because he's a Zodiac killer. But. Just one of his drunk mates did it once, innit? Yeah, I think, I think that's probably what it was. And they eat it, and he's like, yeah, you can eat it. I'm going to have violent diarrhoea for the next couple of days. It'll be fine. Fine. <laughs> It'll all be fine. Well, I think there's I do, something yeah. to the idea of, like, and I've got an idea, and I'm quite drunk, dear listener. But this idea of, like, what did I call it earlier? What's the saying? Uh, the psychic. Uh, psychic resonance. Psychic resonance, that's of, it. Like, that much shit that much energy being released in such a quick time in such an enclosed space that maybe there's residue of that. Yeah. It's not beyond, to me, the realms of... I'm not saying I believe it. I'm just uh, open, I guess, to the idea that that there is something to these places where so many lives have been lost in such a short space of time. All right. Well, it could be complete breaks. could be all... What, what happened to, like, all the wars that we didn't know about, like, in Stone Age and things, and you had tribes and tribes? But do we know where the place... If we knew yeah. where the battlefield Well, that's it. It's, it's all about because we know about it. I think I think it's mm. worth putting our own... I see the thing is, no one ever sees caveman ghosts. That's what I mean. It's a valid point. It's a valid point. You know. They must have had rock wars. Exactly. But, but you got to look at the size of things, haven't you? And you're talking, it wasn't the, well, the, the population state. wasn't there. Yeah, I know, but I mean, you're also you're talking about mechanised killing in some of these these battles. I mean, like Stalingrad. So it has to be a them. certain number of deaths to reach this site of resonance. Yeah, maybe. maybe. I don't know, mate. I know it sounds I mean, 20 or 30 dudes on 20 or 30 dudes. It's it, no. just that, but thousands of Neither are my mates. And death. again, I, I know people, you know, my family members that say they've seen ghosts. Mm. Now, are they liars? Well, no, I don't think they are lying. Actually, you're saying that there's a possibility, gentlemen, I challenge you, Tuesday, Ironbridge, the Tom Tyne, there is a ghost hunt on. Oh, oh no, fuck that bullshit. Mate, you just sit, I'll tell you what. You're you just you... sitting giggling in a dark room going, hee, 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 <laughs> hee, oh, and the ghost, hee. <laughs> <laughs> we could do a Jolly Green Giant. What are you doing? I'm recording that point. I don't know. Well, that's how exciting he is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I chose to represent him as a leprechaun. Leprechaun's hunt for ghosts as well. Mike, <coughs> do you want to tell us you want to identify the leprechaun from now on? Oh, but Jesus. Where's me gold? <laughs> uh, is that what you, 
Gas upgrades, I say, they're fucking transformed and they're leprechaun. <laughs> fucking amazing. Well, top of the morning to you, Benjamin. <laughs> oh, fuck <laughs> off. Benjamin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to transform and a leprechaun and go hosts. You, you will respect my... Uh, I'm not. <laughs> my uh, identity. So I think, my, I think you're bang on and in both respects. I think the idea that the reason these battlefields feel quiet and sad is purely preloaded from us knowing when we go there. Yep. We've been educated, yeah, X amount of thousand men died here. So you go there and you're preloaded with that information and you stand there and you think, wow, yeah, this is creepy. It's a valid yep. point, actually. It is a valid point. But I also, I am not going to completely rule out this no. idea of because I don't understand. It is all woo woo. I know it's a lot of people have seen ghosts. Mm, a yeah. lot of people. I think this idea of that much is that something in your brain? Like if is we go to one of the temples, you know the South American temples where people were sacrificed, mm. tens of yeah. thousands of people. Oh sacrificed. fuck it, every day, yeah. hundreds of people every day. If we went there, that would be interesting to find out. If we went there, is there a feeling? Well, that's well, the, my no, sister's that's been there. That. My Ooh. sister's been there. And she never said she saw a ghost. No, but yeah. now let's not go as far as feeling as seeing a ghost, but do you think just the resonance of that energy that was released from everyone? I have no backup for this scientific got, explanation. In that scenario, you've got, you've got, a, you've got a range of emotions, haven't you? No, no you've got the emotion. negative, you've got the positive. It's a human construct. I, I, I mean, it's not something I tangible, like... Look, I don't believe in ghosts. You think it can get released into the... I don't believe in ghosts. Yeah. But I do think that the amount of... I don't know, something. I'm not going to I'm gonna tie it down to a specific phrase. I'm going to say energy. I'm not going to say spirituality. I'm going to say consciousness. But something from that amount of lives ending that quickly left an impression of some kind. I think... Possible... That- yeah, I'm not sure. I but if it. I, if you put a gun to my head now, as I've always said since we started the show, yeah, I don't believe in ghosts. Fuck ghosts. Yeah, but we've always said that. I do. There might be something, but I think we may have stumbled upon it though. This idea: if you take me to Auschwitz or wherever to a battlefield, I'm gonna know before I go there yeah. what happened, and that is gonna influence how I feel while I'm there. And that's, I think, pretty basic psychology. But then. I am also open to this idea that energy is tangible, maybe. Does that mean it can echo and exist? Is it a multiverse crossing over? Because everything that happens happens for a reason. Everything everything that's happening is happening in an infinity of ways, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and allegedly they overlap. Is it. What do you mean they overlap? Well, the multiverse. Well, they're all happening simultaneously. Yeah, they never. never touch though but there could be some yeah. bleeding between yeah. possible enough, since they opened up the fucking CERN so in our universe since one goes back to another in the other universe that they're seeing the other guy is stabbing the other guy there are people who say since the Hadron Collider that yeah, things have that been things have been a bit iffy like reality has broken yeah. we're bleeding through dimensions what I did find a bit eerie was them cities in the clouds you ever see them yeah mm. I did that it was in China yeah. Was, yeah yeah there's this awesome comic book. I'm a subscriber to 2000 AD. That's one of my little treats to myself. £15 a month. Well worth it. So every week... You remember that comic book? So I oh, know. But do you know why though? There's a reason. It's part one. Part, uh-huh. I get part two next month and I'll give it to you as a as a complete story because you get uh-huh. to the end of the one I've got and you're like, eh? Uh-huh. And then I realised part two was coming so I haven't forgotten you. But anyway, there's a comic strip at the moment called Indigo Prime, which is fucking mind-bending but awesome. It's about this sort of force that, because the multiverse is real, there has to be a police kind of force that police travels it. through the oh, okay. multiverses, making sure things don't bleed into each other. And Some people get control a bit like the Matrix and they can be whatever they want to be and like, you know... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Re- it, fucking awesome idea though cool. just police in the multiverse basically I love it Indigo Prime yeah mm. but yeah so I, I, I'm with you on like maybe it, so is there some bleed through of dimensions and Possibly. like is that war you go to that battlefield in our dimension and in some other dimension it's happening now today or it's still happening or it's still and you're hearing some echoes and ghosts of 
Yeah. In, I don't know. Or is it all in the brain and people are it's something hallucinating? Weird. Because we know we this happened there and our brains play mm, to that. Yeah. The same way that if you think you're ill, you can make yourself feel yeah. more ill. Right. Without being daft, and I'm not just saying this to sort of troll or be daft, the, the Princess Diana thing, if we went to the tunnel where she died, I'm pretty sure if nobody told us that was the tunnel, you know what I mean, and we just thought we were walking through a, a subterranean traffic tunnel in Paris, yeah. we'd walk through it like, oh, fucking hell, can't wait to get to the other side, what a load of shit. But if we walked through it and somebody was like, oh, this is the one where she died, actually. Well, you two are in tears. No, but hang on. Can't have an erection? Yeah, of course I would. <laughs> I'd be masturbating the before. He you couldn't, the spot you couldn't that tell. Was, you was couldn't, it the 13th pillar? Are you wanking over the 13th exactly. pillar? <laughs> you couldn't sneak me. You couldn't sneak me into the fucking tunnel because I'd know which one it was. Mm-hmm. But my point is, <laughs> if you knew what tunnel it was, you're going to feel <laughs> solemn, aren't you? No, well, you two would. <laughs> My point is, <laughs> if you knew what tunnel it was, and you walk to that thirteenth pillar, you're gonna feel something, aren't you? And you gently rub your crotch against it. <laughs> Both of you would, either side. <laughs> you wouldn't be spit roasting a ghost. <laughs> or am I? <laughs> Don't you tell me who I wouldn't be spit roasting. <laughs> You two, I'm going to say again for the listener because I've tried literally four times now. I'm going to finish the fucking sentence. Sorry, mate. Like, fuck these Sorry. two. Listen to me, listener. If you walk through that tunnel and you didn't know what tunnel it was, you just think you was walking through a fucking random tunnel in Paris and it would just seem like a shitty, drippy, miserable tunnel. But if you fucking knew it was the one that she died in and you'd walk up to the 13th pillar and you'd feel something, yep. you'd stand there and you'd feel solemn and you'd have a moment for fucking Prince Right, Diana. because you knew. But it's all, exactly, it's all fucking preloaded. So if you didn't know it was that tunnel that she died in, you'd just walk through it. Why are we in a fucking tunnel? <laughs> So it's oh, all you preloaded made, and you. it's all bollocks, yeah. yeah. So yeah. well done, Ben. You spent fucking four hours telling us about fucking eighteenth century wars. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> Fuck me, I feel educated. Right. I hope you do. I didn't. Oh man, I, I had so much on Sally. None Brad. of them are wanted. Let's do the weird news. <laughs> I had so much on Sally Brad. You loved it. <laughs> really with a tail on that. I told you I'm doing my top ten dead wrestlers. You do it. I, I love that. That'd be great. Okay, so weird news. Let's get the boys' views on this week's weird news. What we got? Christian Cavour maintains abstinence through the first two years of marriage. Okay. Wow. John and Dara. Croker, who dutifully abstained from sex during their 14th month, 14 month courtship, have remained abstinent after marriage and plan to do so indefinitely. Okay. This is going to be satire. I don't know. If it was holy before, it must be double holy afterwards, <laughs> Dara Jesus says. Jesus Christ. They have now completed 25 months of marriage without any sexual contact. Going about their normal lives, jobs, and social calendar with no hint of relational strain. She's cheating on you so <laughs> hardcore, bro. Oh my god. She's got a virgin birth, isn't she? <laughs> he she's thinks... she's going to say to him one day, Honey, mm. I'm pregnant and it's the Lord. He's going to go, Fucking fantastic. Yeah, virgin birth, we did it. We did it, and how wonderful of the Lord to give us a black baby as well, so that we can prove to the world, you know, that the Lord is not racist. The virgin birth can happen to anyone. Oh dear. Oh God, he looks like that guy next door. He must be a very holy neighbour. <laughs> oh, sometimes as a dinner, they will kiss in the kitchen. And start having bedroom thoughts. Don't Dallas kiss says. me if we're not going to fuck. But they never fail to pull back. Donna <laughs> breaks away to spray cool misted water on her face. And Johnny eats a whole raw potato to take <laughs> himself out of the mood. This is sad as <laughs> No one's eating a raw potato. Yeah. No one's keeping a raw potato <laughs> by the bed. Just a sexy potato <laughs> bed. In case you feel like shagging. You know, imagine lying there. Ah, and you, you just, just even peel it. 
<laughs> yeah, you know you lie there sometimes. You don't even think you're at it. All of a sudden, you get a hard on. Yeah. And you're like, oh, better get the sex potato. <laughs> better get the sex potato. Uh, don't touch me <laughs> to this. A rod. Honey, you're sinful. You're giving me sinful thoughts. It's time just eating a raw potato. Uh, it keeps other people. I, I don't know if it is satire or not. It's, it's the on Pope, the Pope. Rob, it's the Pope. Yeah, it's but satire, it, is it? Yeah, but it isn't written by the Pope. It's a screenshot. Ah, I've got gotcha. you. We, let's do the last paragraph then, because that's the weeping of the last paragraph. Is it? Uh, <laughs> wow. Raw potato, yeah. Wow. Uh, These guys don't fuck. And that's that. <laughs> it's, isn't, if they're that Christian, I just point it out there, isn't marriage to do with procreation? That's the point you get married, so your children are lawful in the eyes of the Lord. So, so, having, a marriage you of, it, is so it? having a marriage that's sex seems kind of pointless. How you interpret it, isn't it? Let's face it, having any relationship without sex is kind of pointless, in all fairness. Well, not for you, Nick, it's not. No, I don't no. think they have those urges anymore. Well, they've <laughs> decreed that like, it's doubly holy, isn't it? If well, you don't do it before yeah, you're married, that's but, one thing. But, gas, gas, they're mm. dumbasses. Yeah, and they're both cheating on each other. Yeah, damn right. So what's the next one? I don't know, the poor guy, I don't think he is. Yeah, no. yeah that's way more likely, isn't it? Yeah. He thinks it's all, we are so holy, we are the holiest couple. Do you know what? We got married and still didn't have sex. <coughs> that's how holy we are. Meanwhile, she's fucking airtight. In some fucking car park yeah. somewhere. She's fucking, she's there, so she's three old, yeah. Oh, good on her, man. And John's got his raw potato. <laughs> <laughs> he's going, he gets in the shower, starts rolling himself and goes, oh, better take the shower potato down. Oh. He's eating he's raw, raw potato. He's got raw potatoes all over the house in case he gets a hard on. <laughs> in case. Oh, They're man. like emergency potatoes. In case of sexual thoughts, break glass, <laughs> put a potato behind it, he starts eating it raw. And eat potato. Well, good luck to you, you potato-eating freak. <laughs> fuck your wife. <laughs> Just fuck your wife. Everyone else is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next one. Next up. Dad left starstruck after Queen legend Freddie Mercury appears in his pork chop. <laughs> <laughs> I love this shit. Is this on the mirror? Oh, the De mirror. Derek Sims, 47, couldn't believe his eyes when he popped his £3.49 pork chop into a pan only to find the rock legend appear 10 minutes later. Wow. Exactly 10 minutes? Where? <laughs> there Where? is a picture for the listener. We're looking at the picture now, listener, and... You're going to have to point this out to me, Mike. He look, if it is Freddie Mercury, he's I'll got a honest. head on the back of his other head. I'll be honest, Gaz, I couldn't see it. What the fuck is that? Where is Freddie? <laughs> I say, if it's Freddie, I can see a tash line. Oh, I can, actually. I can see eyes. But then yeah. also, he's got a head, a demonic head, oh, on well, the back of his own head. Oh, you're talking about this is tash? Yeah. Yeah. And there's his eyes. Yeah. That could be Ned Flanders. It could be. Yeah. You're right, it could be. Could be Stalin. Could be, um, could be, <laughs> what's his face at Breaking Bad? Do you know what that is? That's a slow fucking news day. Mm. That's what <laughs> yeah, that is. That's what that is. Holy shit. And I expect more from the mirror. <sighs> the Damn dad it. of two have been cooking dinner for him and his wife Donna, 46, as a bank holiday treat at the home in Blackpool. What, a oh, pork chop? A £3.49 <laughs> pound, pence pork chop <laughs> is a holiday treat? Brexit Britain, mate. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> yes, no. In Rat Brexit the rest Britain, of the week. You'll be killing the pig yourself <laughs> for the chop. The pigeon? The pigeon? Fuck, mate. In awe of his dinner resembling the late superstar who passed away in 1991, Derek took some photos before tucking in. Engineer Derek said, I've never seen anything like it. Okay. I've cooked a lot of things and lived a lot of years, but I've never seen my food resemble a celebrity before. Wow. I think mean, there's a healthy dose of pareidolia going on, in all fairness. Yeah, you don't that say. is such a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, if it is Freddie Mercury, then he's got a demon head attached to the back of his own head. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm seeing. Or maybe I can see demons. Freddie Mercury. Absolute bullshit. Oh yeah, well. Good luck to him. Go on then, Mark. Give us He's had his 15 minutes of fame. Yeah. Exactly. It's more than we've had. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants 
Sunday, Go on, Gad, your one then. Sunday Sporter article. And but bear in mind that Mike picks the running order. <laughs> I'll get close to the telly so I can read it. <clears throat> By the power of sheep spunk. <laughs> Sad line. 80s kids will know by the power of Grayskull, wow. which is his based on. And the guy looks up, he's got a He-Man bowl cut. He does have a He-Man bowl <laughs> cut. This is true. You're about to find out what he uses for hair gel. <laughs> <laughs> Self-styled He-Man of the Valleys says his strength is down to ram jizz. <laughs> Cheers. So, no fairness, he's, he's not fat. He's no, built. He's built. As a boy, Alwyn Jones obsessed with the comic book hero He-Man. He watched every episode of the TV cartoon and he had all the action figures which he used to recreate the life or death battles between the hero and his arch nemesis, Skeletor. In that, he was no different from any other boy growing up in Pontypreed, South Wales. Is that where Farmer Sam comes from? That's where Tom Jones comes from. No, no, that's Pontypool. Anyway, so what sets our win apart is that when he grew up, he did not put away such childish fantasies. And now... Age 47, he is He-Man. Is he? Mm. I'm wow. interested to see where the sheep spoke. <laughs> Alvin, so we all I don't know, but a sub-headline just says blowjobs. <laughs> <laughs> so, Alwyn, who was trained every day since he was 16 and had his hair cut in the shape of the He-Man bob, was last week awarded the prestigious He-Man of Europe crown at a ceremony in Sofia, Bulgaria. Proud Alwyn said, Unlike many of the Eastern European competitors, I do not resort to steroids. I have a milkshake every day derived from ram semen. No. That is my secret formula. It is disgusting, but it has made me into He-Man. <laughs> <laughs> Does that mean that one of those rams turns, <coughs> turns into battle ram? I'm gonna be, oh. <laughs> one neighbour <laughs> who asked not to be named for fear of reprisals said, How would you like it if your neighbour spent all night pissed as a badger yelling, I have the power! <laughs> <laughs> Or confronting delivery men, accusing them of being Skeletor. That's fantastic, I love it. And as for the sheep spunk, don't believe any of that nonsense he spouts about milkshakes. He sucks up rams in his backyard. <laughs> <laughs> but he did win a He-Man competition. <laughs> And I don't know if you've seen a ram getting a blowjob, but quite frankly, it is the most horrific sight in all of existence. Pint after scalding pint of it. Oh, <laughs> and that pervert, pint. that pervert doesn't spill a drop. Oh. It turns my stomach. <laughs> Pints. Uh, I just literally tipped beer all over myself. That's how perturbed I was by the goat sucking. Wow. Well, wow, still won the competition though, didn't he? <laughs> wow, good on you, Arwim. Fuck me. <laughs> Fucking hell. I, think I, that... I don't even know where I go with that. Full Alex? <laughs> yeah, let's wrap this bad boy up. Yeah. So, this is time for Full Alex, the favourite game show of this flat, where we decide this week who's got more Full Alex. Premise of the game, Mike finds us a couple of random weirdos on the internet, and we pit them against the arch saint of insanity himself, Alex Jones. Winner is, who goes more Full Alex? Just remember, so I've got a little bit of Alex, quarter Alex, half Alex, three quarters Alex on a train, but never... <laughs> Go full Alex. Nope. Definitely not. Were you trying to get crazy with this scene? Don't you know I'm loco? (laughs) 
So who we got first, Mike? First up, Hank Kuhneman. I've seen him before. Yeah, man. he's been here before. It says abortion gives demonic spirits the quote blood right over America. Right. Okay. Well, let's see what this guy is going to say. Sounds <laughs> fun. Gonna hold us accountable. We're electing people into office that are pro-choice, um, pro-abortion. I know you'll probably bring that up. But the truth of the matter is, I believe God's going God's to hold the church accountable. The Bible says that judgment must begin at the house of God. we got to look at ourselves and what we're allowing to have liberty in the nation that is a hindrance to the gospel. Just those things Hank was talking yeah. about. So we've got to rise up. Yeah, I'm going to move quickly because I want to share some prophecies with you as well but let's talk about abortion we need to stop voting these people in office here's why blood and spirit go together genesis chapter 2 in verse 7 it says that god formed man out of the dust of the earth and breathed into him the breath of lives okay plural he had, he had the ability to operate in the spirit realm and in the natural and, and it says that he became a living soul. Leviticus 17, 11, the life of all flesh is in the blood. When God breathed into man, that clay man from the earth that he was made from, blood began to flow and spirit began to be the life of the flesh as well because mm -hmm. it was in the blood. So blood and spirit go together. This is why witches use animal sacrifices. They, they use human sacrifices because it draws a spirit as a medium to carry out certain agendas. That's right. The enemy now, since the legalizing of abortion on our land, has carried out the agenda of hell and has released spirits over our land. This is why there is such a fight right now on our land. Who is going to get the blood right of the United States of America? God is wanting, through the shed blood of His Son, to release His Spirit with another great awakening. But if we are fear-prone, divided, and shedding innocent blood through abortion and legalizing it and voting people in, it's furthering the agenda of the demonic blood right for those spirits then to rule over our land and take prayer out of the schools, Come on. right? That's Bring right. violence to our schools now. So I, I saw someone say it used to be prayers in the school, now it's bullets, okay? We, we, we have people that are confused in their gender identity, okay? It's, it's released a whole lot of Pandora's box. When we shut that door, I'm telling you, it's part of what is going to unleash the greatest move of God that this nation has ever seen. That's why in New York City, when they, that governor and those were, 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 were voting in that you can kill a child in the womb up to nine months and even an hour after the womb, they ought to be ashamed of themselves and you who vote these people in need to do a heart check. Yes. Are you on the Lord's side? Do you really understand that you're hindering God's agenda? You're furthering through a legal blood right of the shedding of human blood in the womb, the furthering of the demonic agenda of hell to destroy this nation. And these politicians who are bent on liberalism and evil, they don't care about the church, they don't care about the life of a child in a womb, and they don't care about the future of America that has the invasion of God yes. to it. Oh, wonderful. Well, he's not, is he? Nine-month abortions never happen. Well, not... The, One just, hour after womb abortion, he yeah. said. That's murder. Yeah. Wait, wait a minute. Who's doing that? Wait a minute. That, Taking guy, a baby that guy thinks that, that like, they've got some clay. <laughs> right? Added some juju to it and it made us. That's what he true. believes. So we've got God wanked in the dirt and that's where you come from. How these people can't believe what I'll they, tell you what they the don't believe what they purport to believe. I'll tell you what the do. funniest thing of it is, Gaz. Mm. Abortion is in the Bible. Mm. It specifically states, if your wife is carrying another man's child, make her drink bitter water, she'll mm. have stomach cramps and will lose the baby. Right. That's in the Bible. Yeah. Old Lovely Testament book. Bible. Yeah, I imagine. Old Testament, yeah. Jesus never mentions it. So all this thing against abortion, they haven't even read their own fucking book. Well, is this in there? Joe Rogan yeah. always says that like, apparently if you really read the book, little tiny things like tattoos are not... Yeah, uh, Leviticus, um, don't, don't mark mm -hmm. your skin, yeah. yeah don't eat meat on a Friday. Yeah. Don't eat beef get, on a Thursday. Yeah. They get the rosary beads tattoo though, don't they? Of course they do. And 
especially if you're scared. And here's Leviticus 41 that says, that shall not mark thy skin. Mark so, you know, of the beast. Yeah, look at us. Fuck him. Uh, right. yeah, so, yeah, so he's, next he's, then? he's a twat. Yeah. Next up, Jesse Peterson. Oh, John Stark. Oh. Jesse Peterson. If you're a regular listener of the show, welcome mm-hmm. to this cunt. You know this cunt. He is saying oh. that educated women are Satan's daughters. Oh. Right, well, I'm going to go out there and just apologise in advance for everything I'm going to say after this mm-hmm. cunt speaks. It can't be any more offensive than what he says, to be fair, so fuck mm, it. Last time I said shoot in the okay. face. <laughs> Okay, right. See, I told you they're on an ego trip. Um, She's proud to be educated, and being educated, there's nothing to be proud about. It really isn't. Uh-huh. It's, um, um, it builds the ego, especially with women. Mm-hmm. It builds their egos, and they really believe that they can be better and are better than men. And so that's why uh, these men who are marrying these so-called educated women, they're turning their husbands into housewives mm. you know they make them stay home they make them babysit they make them cook they make them clean they make them be the woman and then when the woman come home the man is stressed out yeah. and complaining just <laughs> like the woman but a real woman would not be on an ego trip she would be happy to be a wife and a mother and she would love the fact that her husband is the head of her because she loves the order of God but these educated women are not like that. I would never, unless she's been born again, never marry an educated woman. You marry Satan's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> what a pathetic little man. <laughs> I was expecting him to say beta male at some point. Mm, but no, it never came. Didn't, yeah. yeah, it never came. So basically, he's afraid, and, and to be fair, he does sound a little bit thick. He's afraid that women are smarter than him. Of course, yeah, but he's I know marry a smart woman because you know that they're going to be smarter than you, don't you, Jesse? It's basically because they've worked out that you know the Bible is not the yeah. truth that it and appears to use, be. You can't use quote unquote the, God's word to control a fucking. I wonder what this thing. guy gets off. Nice. Well, we know what. You know, it's like. Yeah. What the fuck? He wants to go back to 1950s America. Yeah, he wants to go back further than that. I remember that, that one bit of weird news he was on where he's like, I want to get a lot of black kids down the same oh, and make, yeah. make them pick cotton. What's going to 1850s? I want to go back to the 1850s. <laughs> and I'm a black guy. Where well, yeah. you can treat women how he likes because they're uneducated and, ha- and don't have a voice. Basically, they're just yeah. breeding. Yeah. They're there yeah. for breeding. And he's got little black boys in the field picking yeah. cotton for him. And what's up with this guy? <laughs> oh, I mean, fuck. really, what, what's up with this guy? Did something happen to you, Jesse? Yes. <laughs> yes, it did. Clearly something. To... You know, I am thankful that this has only got 751 views. Well, this is not his yeah, original. That's a repost, ah, isn't it's a repost. it? Ah. So his original could well, have millions. If anyone who listens to us listens to him, <laughs> what the fuck are you thinking? <laughs> and if they you do listen to him, listen to whoever they want, man. And if you do listen to him, tell him I want to punch him in the fucking face. <laughs> tell him that Ben, could the, the brother post a promise, will fucking punch you in the face if he ever sees you. Well, thankfully, it was short but sweet this week. So, oh. what's Saint Alex, the Don Juan genre of fucking lunacy, got to say? Oh. He's explaining the film Bird Box. And. You ever seen it? No. Is that the one where the blind ball? Sandra Bullock. Yeah, yeah. Okay, right. So they, they, it's quite good actually. Basic premise is like that whatever they see that. is their worst fear, and they end up killing themselves. Is that right? I haven't watched it. Leona watched it, and she enjoyed it, and she was quite disturbed by it as well, mm. if I remember. Give us a basic plot. Oh, forget that. I'm an old stone when I watched it. Oh, I remember being alright. <laughs> yeah. They actually blind. It's something to do time. with yeah. if you see it, you're fucked. Yeah, 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 basically, you do kill yourself. You're right, yeah. They yeah. see sort of. I don't know what they see, you don't really find Whatever out. Whatever freaks them the most. Isn't yeah, it? basically. Or loved ones tell them to kill themselves or something. Yeah. And they commit suicide. Right. So it's almost like that Mark Wahlberg film where the trees tell everyone to kill themselves. Oh, God. One of the shittest films I've ever watched. Never M- seen M- that. Is it M. Night Shyamalan? Is yeah, it the happening? It's the wind. The wind is killing them. Oh. Yeah. The, There's yeah. all these shots of the bushes moving. Oh, yeah. Like you find it. <laughs> it's awful. Yeah, it's terrible. 
He's on the hit or miss, isn't he? Mostly miss out of the mm. sixth sense for me. In fact, all, all miss, in all yeah. fairness. I quite like that one where they were sort of like... Oh, the village? Yeah, yeah. that one. That was okay, but... Because that got me, because I, I, I didn't figure it out at all. But I, I, after the sixth sense, I was expecting that big plot twist. Mm. And I'm like, eh. Anyway, yeah. let's see what Alex has got to say about it. All right, yeah. Bird okay. Box. And so how could anyone not, I mean, I knew in three minutes watching Bird Box that it was cell phone 5G radiation that someone's hacked into, <laughs> and that after the grid falls, how they had to weaponize it that a certain percentage got given a program to be hunter killers and cleanse the earth. And I was sitting there talking to Pat, and I said, let me guess, it doesn't kill everybody, some live, and they're going around killing people to cleanse the earth. And he said, yeah, that's exactly, how would you know that? And I said, well, it's in the New York Times, the Washington Post last week, that we're going to cleanse the earth and kill all the humans, and a great cleansing's coming. <laughs> and so, see, once the grid goes down, you'll need enough What's programmed missing? people <laughs> to go out and kill whoever's left. And see, that, that's a metaphor, too. They just turn the power off, 90% will die within a few months. And because you'll have roving bands that kill everybody. Within 15 days, either 100% of people commit suicide... 100%. Or they become cannibals. <laughs> no, within 15 days. So you need to mind yeah, all right. Just turn the lights off for 15 days. I'll get that. But see, the shape of things to come is here. And they're now doing final prep. But it doesn't mean they're going to launch that op that they tell you about in things like the Kingsman as well. No, no, no. That's just one of the ops they have waiting for you. But they are about to engage operations. There's a lot to take in there. Mm. Who wants to start? <laughs> I am so drunk. Oh, I lost him completely. <laughs> I love the bit where he says either anybody's gonna, everybody's gonna turn into um, oh, that's it. We're, we're, kill themselves yeah. or turn into cannibals. Within fifteen days, people will kill themselves or turn into cannibals. hundred percent. I can't to agree because fifteen days with their internet, TV, electricity, hot food. Yeah, yeah. I, I fully agree. Society would completely break down. You know, I don't even give it 15 days. I'll give it five. They say society is three meals away from There you go. Three meals away from... Or oh, oh, half an hour without Wi-Fi. Yeah. Oh, fuck. You remember when I lost my Wi-Fi over Christmas last year? Mm -hmm. I told you about it. I was so fucking angry. Terrific. Oh, it's terrible. Connor, who's got it this week, then? I'm giving it... Oh, it's just eight pieces. Let's go through it again. over the first guy. He's, he just believes anything he's ever read. <laughs> Alex just lost me a little bit this week. He jumped around. We ended up on something completely different. I. Oh, yeah, let's run through him first. Go on, then, Mike. Yeah. Hank Kuhneman says abortion gives demonic spirits the blood right over America. That's pretty insane. Jesse Lee Peterson says educated women are Satan's daughters. He's just a cunt. And Alex yeah. Jones is basically saying that what the elites have planned for us. To shut the electricity off. And pre program certain yeah. sections of the population <laughs> yeah. to be hunter killers. Yeah. Alex has got it. Yeah, he has it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Alex wins. Yeah. 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 He's got you, Annie. I mean, yeah. first guy's nuts. Oh, mm. batshit. Well, they all are. You have to be batshit insane to qualify. <laughs> That's true. That's the minimum. Is that the, is that the scale you give them, Sarge? Or some yeah. like, are you, have, you, you're, have you invented your own batshit crazy <laughs> scale? Yes, <laughs> yeah. for this show. Basically. Yeah. How many boxes? That's not abortion. Fucking murder. Uh, homosexuality is wrong. Mm. Yeah, they tick so many boxes and they get on. How I many cures are the test? Well, just, just the videos I can find this week, to be fair. <laughs> Alex passed this week. I yeah. think he's got it. You yep. too. Right. Let's all do right. it. So let's wrap it up. It's all been good. Thank you very much for listening. I've been Ben, Dungeon the Flavor Aid, and Dungeon a Call. I've been Gaz. Subscribe to Sewage Pipe Gaming on YouTube. Free Biff Talent, and thank you. I've been Mike. Thanks for listening. Peace out.